Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto were to access a bloodline long forgotten part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. It was night in the village of Kanahagakur. In a forest clearing sits a blonde haired boy no older than 14, wearing a bright orange and blue jumpsuit just under a tree. This boy was none other than Naruto Uzumaki the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi no Kitsune. Clutched close to his chest was a large scroll almost the same size as the boy himself. Am Anbu I think I should be okay here for a bit. He said out loud through labored breaths. Why would he be hiding one may ask. That would be a question best answered with a look back on the blonde's life. Orphaned at birth Naruto was given to the orphanage where he was to be raised as any normal child. Unfortunately that was not to be as his status as the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi was leaked. In an effort to give the young blonde as normal a childhood as he could, the Sandame Hokage passed a law outlawing the older generation from speaking of the boy's burden. This unfortunately only led to parents telling their children to stay away from the boy. This had led to Naruto becoming the number one pariah of Konoha. By the age of five he had been thrown out of the orphanage only to be given a rundown apartment. By the age of six he was under constant Anbu guard as he had already had over 200 assassination attempts on his life and nearly a yearly beating on his birthday. By the age of 80 he had enrolled in the academy to become a shinobi. Unfortunately due to the bias and efforts to sabotage his education by all but a single teacher, Hiroki Yamino, Naruto had failed his graduation exam three times now. His latest failure was what led to his current predicament. After having failed the third time just earlier today he was approached by one of his academy instructors, Achunin Mizuki, that informed Naruto he could still pass if he were to complete a secret test. This test was to steal the Forbidden Scroll of Seals which contained some of the village's most powerful and guarded jutsu. Naruto however was not the loudmouth idiot everyone thought him to be. In fact if he was quite intelligent for his age, yet was forced to hide his intellect behind a mask of stupidity, in fear of what the villagers would do, should the demon brat get too strong for his own good. Immediately he was sure Mizuki was up to something knowing the man was easily one of his most avid saboteurs in the academy. However he had no proof to show his instructor was up to no good. Knowing he would need to be caught in the act Naruto stole the forbidden scroll and purposefully tripped one of the security seals in the Hokage office. Naruto snorted at the thought of those seals. Damn things are so outdated if I wasn't trying to get noticed, I would have been able to take the scroll and be halfway out of high, no kuni before anyone even noticed. He had been discreetly studying seals since his third year of the academy and was easily at level 2 out of 10. Shaking those thoughts from his mind, Naruto realized he had a few hours until he was to meet Mizuki. Unfurling the scroll he began reading through several of the jutsu before one of interest caught his eye. Cage Bunshin. He muttered to himself. As he read over the description. The Cage Bunshin no jutsu allows the user to create solid clones that split chakra evenly among the original and clone. When dispersed memories of the clone are sent back to the original. As he finished reading the description Naruto had to hold himself back from shouting in anger. The regular Bunshin was all but impossible for him as it required far too little chakra than he could use without summoning over 60. He had even gone to his Jiji the Sandame Hears in Siratobi and was told to simply try harder and that to help him would be showing favoritism. He sighed he knew he couldn't stay angry at the old man for long. He knew his Jiji had his reasons for doing what he did, which was a long list of things from lying about his parents to his lack of help. Yes Naruto knew the old man knew the identity of his parents, yet refused to tell him. Naruto had come to the conclusion some time ago that his parents must have been strong enough to have enemies that would want to harm him as retribution. Continuing to look through the scroll Naruto was almost to the bottom when he found a seal that looked strangely familiar. He could tell that it was definitely a storage seal with a blood seal over top to protect whatever was held, however what he couldn't place was the strange swirl-like pattern of the blood seal. The closet he could say that he was sure of was that it resembled the spiral on the back of his jacket and the flak jackets of the village Chunin and Jonin. Deciding to take a chance he pulled a kunai and cut his palm. Smearing the blood across the seal there was a puff of smoke revealing two scrolls. The first was a red scroll with the same spiral but in white. The second was a black scroll with a golden spiral. Deciding to open the red scroll first he opened it and began reading. Dear clansmen. If you are reading then you have been able to open the blood seal that was attuned to the DNA of our clan, the Uzumaki. Naruto was shocked as he read that he had a clan. Was this the reason his Jiji had lied to him? What's more is that this seal was designed so that it would only open for a member of the royal Uzumaki family. This is due to the contents of the scroll placed with this one. It is a scroll designed by our founder Arashi Uzumaki to test for our most fabled bloodline, as despite our clan being known for our longevity, chakra chains, and dense chakra, we have a bloodline only seen in our founder himself. 
Unfortunately I cannot explain the details of the bloodline as I know little. However, I know for certain if you possess this bloodline the scroll will reveal the information to you. Sincerest regards. Mito Uzumaki. The say Naruto was in shock would be an understatement. He had a clan, a clan that had several abilities that sounded amazing and apparently had an extremely rare bloodline to boot. He took a calming breath before picking up the black scroll well here goes nothing. But that he unfurled the scroll only to see that it was entirely blank. Huh, that's strange. I know the last scroll said this one would show me something if I had the bloodline, but the paper of the scroll felt different than that of the first, as Naruto ran his hand over it. It's rougher weight I read about this. I just need to he trailed off as he channeled chakra into the scroll. Soon ink began to appear and move to form sentences on the scroll. Wait this means yes. I have an awesome bloodline. He shouted in joy before getting control of himself. His idiocy may have been a mask, but he always had a lot of spare energy. So this bloodline is called the Predator Bloodline, named after its only no user Arashi Uzumaki. It's apparently twofold. He trailed off as he sat studying the scroll for nearly a half hour before practicing the cage bunch and no jutsu. Two hours later. Aruka was worried as he jumped from roof to roof. An hour ago he had been in bed thinking over the day's events when he was suddenly roused by his longtime friend Mizuki banging on his door. Apparently his favorite blonde student had stolen the forbidden scroll of seals. Now the majority of the village was out looking for Naruto. He shook his head wondering what could have caused Naruto to do something so foolish as he darted into the woods to check for his student. Spotting a mop of blonde hair and an orange jumpsuit Aruka leaped from the branches landing in front of Naruto. He took note of his appearance, noticing that he was scuffed and dirty, as though he had been training. Boy Naruto. Aruka sensei he I did it I passed the test. He stated playing his usual part as an idiot. Naruto what test do you have any idea what you've done? He asked in confusion his anger momentarily forgotten. Huh, but Mizuki sensei said if I could get the scroll and learn a jutsu from it I could pass and I would earn my hit I ate. Naruto said in faked confusion. Mizuki. Why would Iruka suddenly heard something flying through the air? Before he could react Naruto had grabbed him by the collar of his flank jacket and pulled him out of the way of the Fuuma shuriken that had just barely missed impaling the Chunin instructor. How not bad for the dead last demon brat. Mizuki sneered as he landed on a branch a little away from the two. Mizuki what are you doing? Iruka screamed in shock. Isn't that obvious Iruka I'm betraying this pathetic village. Naruto give me the scroll Iruka is trying to stop you from graduating. No. Naruto don't. Mizuki is betraying the village he's Iruka tried to say but was cut off by a glare from Naruto. I'm not an idiot Iruka sensei I knew from the beginning Mizuki team was up to something. Naruto stated seriously before turning his glare on Mizuki. The white-haired Chunin had to suppress a shiver that ran up his spine. He shrugged it off believing he had nothing to worry about Aruka was weak and the demon brat wasn't even a genin. Say Naruto do you want to know why you're so hated by this village? He asked with a cruel smirk. No Mizuki you can't it's forbidden. Aruka shouted trying to stop his former friend. Naruto looked at Mizuki and snorted. You mean that I'm the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi no Kitsune? He said in a matter-of-fact tone. The two older shinobi were surprised for a moment but that was all Naruto needed. Suddenly a heel connected with Mizuki's face sending him crashing to the ground. Iruka was stunned to see another Naruto standing on the branch Mizuki had just been on. There was a sudden poof before he noticed Naruto's hands in a cross-hand seal, causing four more cage bunshin to poof into existence. Without a word each of the clones were on Mizuki. Two slashed his Achilles's tendon and both his feet, while the other two had drilled kunai into his elbows, preventing him from moving. Seeing his clones had done their work Naruto approached while his clones held Mizuki on his knees. Chunin Mizuki for breaking the third's law, as well as attempted defection of the leaf you are sentenced to death. Naruto stated coldly. Mizuki attempted to say something, but it died in his throat as Naruto slashed it open. The tense few moments passed before the silence was broken. And Naruto. Haruka asked worried about his student who was just staring at the now deceased Mizuki. Sorry sensei it's just he tried to speak but struggled to find the words. First kill. Haruka stated in understanding as he approached and put a hand on his student's shoulder. Naruto nodded before rushing over to a nearby bush. He knew what he did was justified and that he would have to kill eventually. Hell he had planned on taking down Mizuki anyway, but for as much as he disliked the man he couldn't help but empty his stomach as the reality struck he was now a killer. After a few moments he was finally able to regain his composure before Aruka beckoned him over. Naruto come here a moment. Seeing his student do as he said Aruka smiled despite the current circumstances he was proud of Naruto. Close your eyes. Naruto did as he was told and kept his eyes closed for a few moments, even as he felt a cloth being tied around his forehead. Open them. He heard Iruka say. 
Opening his eyes Naruto saw Iruka kneeling in front of him however he was missing his headband. Naruto get tears at the corners of his eyes as he reached up and traced a leaf symbol that now rested on his forehead. Iruka sensei Congratulations Naruto you are now a shinobi of the leaf. Iruka stated before ruffling Naruto's hair. Their moment was interrupted by the sound of someone clearing their throat. The two turned to see a cat-masked Anbu with long purple hair and a tiger-masked Anbu with short brown hair staring at the two. Despite being unable to see their faces Naruto began to sweat as he could feel the piercing gaze of the cat-masked Anbu. Oh oh hi and Niko Onichin, tiger sent I wasn't expecting you guys to find me so soon. He stated while sweating slightly. Oh Naruto-kun you sound disappointed after all would I really miss your latest stunt. She asked in a sweet tone that forced Iruka to back away from Naruto slightly. Niko not now you can tear Yuzumaki sent a new one after Lord Third speaks with him and Yumino san. The tiger masked Anbu stated stoically. Niko huffed but relented as she approached Naruto to shunshin him to the Hokage's office. Knowing what was about to happen Naruto held up his hand. One second Ni-chan there's something I need to do first. He stated before he hurriedly approached the body of Mizuki. Holding out his hand Naruto began to focus chakra into his palm as he closed his eyes. The others around him were about to question what he was doing when a blue goo-like substance shot from Naruto's palm surrounding Mizuki's body. After a few minutes the goo slowly retracted to reveal Mizuki's body had disappeared entirely. The two Anbu and single Chunin looked on at Naruto in shock. Finally it was Iruka that broke the silence. Naruto what was that? He asked. Oh that was my bloodline I didn't even know I had it until just a few hours ago. It took a lot longer to absorb the body than it should have though. He stated as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Okay I'm ready to go, but can I ask that you three keep this a secret for now. I'll talk to Jiji about it when we get there. The three shared a look before nodding to Naruto. Niko approached Naruto and placed a hand on his shoulder, though her grip was tight, letting Naruto know their conversation would not be forgotten. In a swirl of leaves the group had disappeared. One hour later. Irizen Saratobi sat behind his desk letting out a deep sigh. He had just dismissed Aruka after hearing his report. He looked to his surrogate grandson that was seated in front of him staring back at him with his icy blue eyes that lacked the warmth they once held. Hiruzen had to suppress a shudder at just how much the boy reminded him of his late successor. He was torn on one hand he was proud of Naruto for stopping a traitor, even if it was an extremely risky plan. On the other he was extremely angry at himself for allowing the prejudice against the boy. At one point he would say he had done his best to give the boy a normal childhood. Now however looking back he felt like a fool. He had allowed himself to be pushed around by the civilian council and his advisors. His inaction and lack of a firm hold on his council had deprived Naruto of the normal childhood he had wanted for the boy, and now he was faced with a choice. Sighing once again Hiruzen spoke. Could you repeat that question Naruto-kun? Naruto stared down the sand aim as he spoke. Why wasn't I told I was a member of a clan Hokage-sama? He asked causing the elderly leader to flinch at the lack of his affectionate nickname. Hiruzen was afraid he had heard correctly. He had to decide now if he was to make steps towards healing the damage this village had done, or if he was to try and keep the boy in the dark even longer. How do you know you are from a clan Naruto-kun? Naruto narrowed his eyes at his village leader. You may drop the act Hokage-sama. I know you were watching the entire time through your crystal ball. I know you were able to see me use the blood seal. I know you've lied to me for years about my family and why the villagers treated me the way they did. I've been able to rationalize most of it, but now I want a straight answer. He demanded. Hiruzen nodded having suspected for some time now Naruto had come to some conclusions of his own. Very well my boy. First I apologize I did what I did to try and give you a normal life and in the hope you would make friends. As for your parents and clan you would have been told of your clan and mother when you reached Chunin and your father when you reached Jonin. However with tonight's developments it's best I inform you of your mother tonight. He stated before removing a scroll from a false bottom in the right hand drawer of his desk. He did they love me Jiji. Naruto asked carefully afraid of what the answer might be. The aged Hokage smiled fondly at the young boy. Of course they did Naruto-kun. I've never met anyone as happy as your parents when they found they were expecting you. Had the Nine Tails incident never occurred I'm sure you would have been the most loved child in the village. He stated handing the scroll to him. Your mother's name was Kashina Yuzumaki and to my knowledge she was the last survivor of the royal Yuzumaki clan of Yuzushi Agakur. She was known as Kanoha's Red Death for her deadly skill with a blade during the Third Great Shinobi War. That scroll was what she left you as well as the Yuzumaki compound and bank account, which to my knowledge was a substantial amount. Nodding Naruto opened the scroll and began reading. Dear Naruto-kun. If you are reading this then the worst has come to pass and I and your two san are no longer alive. I want to apologize for that above all, I did not want to leave you. 
even though I only got to hold you for a few minutes I will always hold those minutes close to my heart, you look so adorable. I am writing this as your two cent holds you, you look so much like him, I can already tell you're going to be a real lady killer when you grow up just like your two cent. I hope you grow up to be a kind, strong and gentle man, my only regret is that I won't be there to see it. There is so much I want to say so much I want to tell you, so many memories I want to share, so much I want to know. I wonder what your life will be like after we're gone. I wonder who will be your first love, your favorite food, color, book, your first words. Oh, Naruto-kun I don't want to leave you, but I have no choice. The kitby was ripped from me and set on a rampage, and the only way to seal it is in an Uzumaki, I can't do it in my weakened state, it would only break free again, it has to be you. I have pleaded with your two cent to find another way, but there isn't time. I just hope that the village will see you for the hero you are keeping the kickby at bay. Please forgive me for leaving you Naruto it is not by my choice, just know that you are loved and will always be loved. Before I end this letter I think you should know that you are the last of our clan. The Uzumaki clan was renowned throughout the shinobi world as masters in the arts of kinjutsu and fuinjutsu. Our home village of Yuzushi Agakur was destroyed during the second great shinobi war. However all was not lost as we always knew we may fall. Our clan's collective knowledge and artifacts was sealed away in a secure cache. As I had joined Kanoha I was unable to know the exact location of the cache until just after I became pregnant with you. The cache is located just over the board that Hai no Kuni shares with you no Kuni, hot water country. I know you will bring our clan back Sachi, and I love you. All the love in the world. Your Ka-san, Kashina Yuzumaki. Tears fell onto the scroll as Naruto finished reading. He wiped his eyes feeling a hand on his shoulder. He looked up to see his Jiji was standing beside him with a grandfatherly smile. Now Naruto-kun as much as I would like to let you go home to adjust to what you've learned there are a few things that need to be discussed. He stated shifting into a serious mood. What does your bloodline do? He asked. Naruto took a moment to collect himself before answering. It's called the Predator Bloodline and it has two parts. First it allows me to I guess you could say consume a target. Secondly when I do I gain that target's elemental affinity and if they have won a bloodline. He explained. Tsuritobi looked shocked as he began thinking. It was obvious the council would try to control Naruto in some way to get his bloodline. More accurately he would need to keep an eye on his former teammate Danzo. Okijiji I would like to request I be placed under the craw. Naruto stated shocking Hiruzen. Naruto how do you know about that and why would you want to be placed under it? He asked feeling the small spike in killer intent, K.I., from a certain cat mask Anbu hidden in his office. In order of your questions. One I was never allowed in the library, so I would often sneak in after hours to read various books, including all of the village's books on laws. Second I'm requesting I be placed under it because the minute you announce this to the council or let's be real the civilian council they will try to force me into multiple arranged marriages. I refuse to be thrown into a loveless marriage. By requesting to be placed in it I get to make the stipulations. He stated with a foxy grin. Hiruzen smiled at Naruto's genius as he was already thinking two steps ahead. If this was any indication of the future then the boy would make a great clan head. Naruto that is simply brilliant. You're correct with your requesting this you can make certain stipulations on how you accept marriages. As a clan head there are even more protections in place as well. He stated causing Naruto to look at him strangely. I thought I would only be considered a clan heir until I reached Jonin. He questioned curiously. Hiruzen grew his own sly smile. Normally that would be correct. However with your position it is a little more complicated. You see your mother was the princess of Whirlpool so that makes you a prince. As a prince with no one directly over you that makes you the daimyo of Whirlpool, as well as the clan head of the Uzumaki clan. Furthermore your clan compound is part of a treaty side between the former fire daimyo and former leaders of Yuzushi Agakur, making it Whirlpool country grounds. By the time he had finished talking they were both now sharing equally mischievous mercs. Old man I think I may start to like council meetings. Naruto stated while chuckling evilly. Well we can discuss more tomorrow Naruto. I've decided to push team placements back a full week. Now let's gather your belongings and I'll show you to your new compound. Hiruzen stated as he stood from his desk. They were preparing to walk out of the office as Naruto spoke again. Actually Hokage-sama I would like to make a request. Naruto stated shifting seriously. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow. And that is what Naruto. I would like to commission an air rank mission starting tomorrow to have a team of Jonin escort me to gather the cash my mother mentioned in her scroll. Naruto stated seriously causing Hiruzen to smile slightly. Yes things would become interesting fairly soon. Naruto slept peacefully in the master bedroom of his new home. There was a sudden loud ringing as his alarm began going off only to have a kunai silence it. Naruto got up groggily although reluctantly as he looked around taking in the side of his new room before going into his bathroom for a shower. 
that was rather spacious, but that was pretty much the way he would sum up his entire compound or more like his small district. It was located just beside the Inuzuka clan's compound, which was a nice plus to him, as the Inuzuka clan had it always been good to him. He had been shocked when the Hokage brought him to his compound. The entire place had been sealed away behind a blood seal on the gates to the district. Once it was removed he was led to the largest house that was located in the middle of the district. It was complete with training grounds, a large dining room, and a library filled with books of his clan, including Tai, Nin, and Fuinjutsu scrolls. After having seen the Hokage out he resealed the entrance to his compound and had spent a few hours having his clones read over some of the scrolls while he explored. He had found many interesting things, but none were as important to him as the diary of his mother's. It was thanks to the diary that he had learned he had godparents. Godparents. He had people that should have been there for him. Naruto shook his head as he walked out of his bathroom. He decided to put it to the back of his mind for now. Right now he needed to get dressed and get to the Hokage's office to meet the team that he was hiring. Same time Hokage's office. Hiruzen took a drag of his pipe as he eyed the four jonin in front of him before returning his gaze to the report on his desk. After having left Naruto last night he had ordered some of his more trusted ninja to investigate the academy. His reasoning was quite simple really, Naruto Uzumaki. Even if he was hiding his true skill and intelligence, there was no conceivable way he should have failed the graduation exam three times. Contrary to popular belief failing one portion of the exam does not outright lead to a complete failure. What he had learned had easily lead to six different instructors being dragged out of bed and sent to a picky. According to the findings in front of him, Naruto was in every sense of the word a genius. His unaltered grades in the written exams were maybe second or third highest in academy history. His accuracy with shuriken and kunai should have been top of the class, and that was with the blunted equipment he was given. His tojutsu though sabotaged was brought up by his natural reflexes and endurance. Once he received proper instruction Hiruzen was sure he would surpass his parents by the time he was 20 and himself by the time he was 25. What he had found however now lead to a new problem, where would he be placed? Originally Naruto would have been placed on the team of Rookie of the Year, Kinoichi of the Year, and Dead Last of the Class. However if this formula were to be followed the team would be woefully unbalanced. The Sandame however was not known as the professor for no reason. He had an idea of what to do with a young blonde. First however he would need an unbiased and fair evaluation of the genin, and this mission he was commissioning would be a perfect opportunity. Hiruzen looked up from the folder to the admirable jonin. The first was his very own son Asuma Siratobi, currently taking a drag of his cigarette. The two were finally returning to speaking terms on a non-professional level, after he had returned from the Twelve Ninja Guardians. Second was the raven-haired beauty known as Konoha's Jinjutsu mistress Kurana Yuhi, who was glaring at the small orange book held by the third jonin. She had been a student of Kishina's genin team with Asuma and Yuga Yuzuki. While never officially having any hand in Naruto's upbringing, she had left more than a few of his assailants mentally broken with her Jinjutsu. The third was none other than the copy ninja had a Kakashi. Kakashi had originally requested Naruto be placed on his team in hopes of being able to train his sensei's son. Kakashi had tried many times over the years to adopt the young Uzumaki, but was met with rejection by the civilian council, just as had all others. Hiruzen had barely managed to stop the man from killing the civilian council by allowing him to be one of Naruto's Anbu bodyguards. The fourth and final Jonin present was one of his most trusted Anbu now wearing the standard Jonin attire. Tenzo now codenamed Yamato, had been rescued from his former teammate's root program after he had been discovered by Kakashi. Yamato had been one of Naruto's other bodyguards over the years and despite disapproving of the boy's pranks, found himself impressed with the so-called dead last. Hiruzen cleared his throat, causing the four to turn their attention to him. Now some of you may not be sure why you have been called here. He stated causing each of them to nod. Last night Chunin instructor Mizuki attempted to betray the village and steal the forbidden scroll of seals. His method of doing so was to attempt to trick Naruto Uzumaki into stealing the scroll for him. He stated looking at them to gauge their reactions. Asuma merely narrowed his eyes. Kakashi had put away his book and was now serious as was Kurunai who was scowling angrily. Yamato looked on impassively as he was present to know the outcome. What happened Hokage-sama? Kurunai questioned forcefully. She may have been prevented from adopting her sensei's son, but she was very protective of the boy. Easy Kurunai-san, I did say he attempted. The aged leader stated. Exhaling another puff of smoke he continued. After being confronted in the forest to the east by Naruto. Mizuki was subsequently defeated and killed by the person he attempted to use. He stated amused at their shocked expressions as Asuma's cigarette fell from his mouth. Am I knew the kid was better than he let on, but to kill a Chunin. Asuma stated. What do you mean Asuma? You were there when we went over the graduating class to get an idea of who we wanted. 
He was easily bottom of the class. Kurenai stated. It would appear Naruto has been hiding his true capabilities in fear of what the villagers would do. I've also discovered his scores and education were sabotaged by all but Aruki Yamino. Hiruzen stated handing the folder to Kurenai. Okajizama, if this is true why are we here? Kakashi questioned. I'm sure this could have waited until we grouped the genin. Hiruzen nodded anticipating that specific question as he grabbed the mission scroll. Last night Naruto learned of his mother, his clan, and discovered he has a bloodline. He stated before going on to explain what he and Naruto had discussed. When he had finished his explanation the three jonin that had known Kashina were happy if the small smiles were any indication, or in Kakashi's case his standard eye smile. About damn time if you ask me. Asuma stated. The kid could use some form of identity other than the prankster king from hell. Gurunai nodded remembering some of Naruto's more infamous pranks. Agreed though you have to admit infiltrating and dying Anbu uniforms pink was quite a feat. She stated with a snicker the only ones to avoid being pranked were the Anbu commander dragon and cat. Hiruzen coughed into his hand hoping to get back to the matter at hand. In Kashina's letter she gave Naruto the location of an Uzumaki cache the clan had in case the worst came to pass. Naruto agreed to look for any more information such as security measures and the like last night when I brought him to his compound. He stated the last part offhandedly. Anyway with team placements moved back Naruto has requested to commission a mission to escort him to retrieve the cache and return it to his compound. And you would like the four of us to act as his escort. Yamato stated. Seeing the Hokage nod his head he voiced his question. If I may Hokage sama why send the four of us this seems like a mission that would be easily undertaken with a lone jonin or pair. Four seems like overkill. Hiruzen conceded the point to Yamato before speaking again. That would normally be correct. However, this mission is being classified as an air ank due to the sensitive nature of what will be retrieved. There is another objective as well that directly affects the four of you. He stated seriously causing all four to straighten up. With the discovery of Naruto's true abilities and knowledge, I've decided that to place him on a traditional team of genin would be detrimental to his development. During this mission you will be evaluating his skills to give us a better understanding of their extent. When this mission is completed, pending your reports, I plan to place Naruto as an apprentice under you Yamato. You will be in charge of his overall development, while for missions Naruto will do rotations with the other rookie squads. The Jonin were quiet for several minutes however each were glancing at Kakashi. The others knew how much he wanted to teach Naruto and were expecting him to argue. Before he could however Hiruzen seeing his trouble spoke first. I understand you want to teach him Kakashi, but this is for the best. Perhaps Yamato would allow you to show him a few things. He offered. I would have no troubles with extra help, especially with what you've told us of his bloodline Hokage-sama. I was aware from his file Mizuki had an earth affinity. I can help Naruto with earth and water, should he have inherited his mother's affinity. However there are areas that I would be less suitable for. Yamato stated after a moment of thought. They were about to continue the conversation before there was a knock at the door. Hiruzen gave permission to enter only to nearly die of a heart attack. The Jonin didn't fare much better as they turned to see who had entered. As they looked on there stood Naruto who had traded out his old Kill Me Orange jumpsuit for more shinobi-like clothes. His headband was still tied around his head while he had traded his orange jacket for a grey long sleeve jacket with blue highlights with a mesh armor undershirt. He now wore a pair of navy blue shinobi pants with bandages wrapped around his right leg where he kept his shuriken and kunai holsters. His blue shinobi sandals had now been traded for a pair of black combat boots. Good morning Hokage-sama. Naruto greeted with a small bow deciding to be formal since there were multiple superiors in the room. Having been drawn out of his shock Hiruzen spoke. To you as well Naruto-kun, though I must say you certainly look like a proper shinobi. He stated with a small smile. The resemblance between Naruto and his father was uncanny. He just hoped the young blonde didn't encounter any Iwa shinobi too soon. Naruto smiled while scratching the back of his head. Yeah thanks, I decided that I needed to wear something different than those jumpsuits, now that I'm not hiding behind that mask. Speaking of Naruto. Hiruzen started getting serious once more. When would you like to inform the council of your heritage as well as take your place on the council? He asked. I would like to wait until I've gotten back. Better to avoid any unwanted surprises. He stated stressing the word surprises while casting a discreet glance towards the bookshelf on the wall. Hiruzen's eyes widened as he gave an almost imperceptible nod. Giving a discreet hand signal the four hidden Anbu appeared around the bookshelf. Just as they appeared a black figure attempted to flee only to have a wooden tentacle wrap around its leg and Kakashi appear behind it and knock them out. As it fell to the floor it became apparent the individual was dressed in standard Anbu attire however the animal mask was blank with the kanji for na. Seeing the mask Hiruzen's eyes narrowed so you never disbanded your root program after all Danzo he thought to himself as he clenched his fists. 
take him to Ibiki and inform him he is free to do as he must. He ordered receiving nods two of the Anbu took the unconscious man away, while the remaining two returned to their hiding places. Hiruzen turned his gaze back to Naruto, as did the assembled Jonin. Naruto how did you know he was there? Naruto shrugged in response. Honestly I'm not sure. Ever since a few years ago I've been able to feel the presence of others around me. I wasn't sure what it was exactly, but I assumed it was a form sensory ability. It took a while to learn to control it too. I usually practiced on the Anbu you had assigned to me. Before you ask I can sense how someone's chakra feels as well as emotion. That's how I could tell he was there as he had no emotion whatsoever. Asuma looked curious. How someone's chakra feels? He asked. Naruto nodded. Yeah for instance yours feels sharp yet at the same time like it's moving sporadically. Hiruzen's eyes widened you can sense someone's chakra nature. He shouted in astonishment causing the others to stare at the blonde in shock. The last person to hold such a sensory ability was his own sensei the Nidame. Finally Yamato was the one to break the tension as he began laughing. It must be a great irony Naruto-san. You have the ability to feel out chakra natures as well as the ability to take them for yourself. It seems Kami-sama wished to make you the perfect predator. Naruto laughed sheepishly. Yeah I guess you're right. Hiruzen shook his head with a small smile. His surrogate grandson was certainly living up to the title of being the most unpredictable person in the leaf. Well Naruto I believe we should move on to business. He stated before motioning to the four Jonin and introducing each. These four are the team that I have assigned the mission you requested. You already know Asuma Siratobi. Good to see you again kid. Asuma stated giving the blonde a friendly wave. The two had met several times before when Naruto had dropped in to see the old man. The Kanoichi is Kurunai Yuhi also known as the Jinjutsu Mistress of Konoha. A pleasure to meet you Naruto-san. She stated giving the blonde a small smile. The Jonin who needs to learn to put that book away in meetings is Kakashi Haddock. Hiruzen stated not happy Kakashi was reading his porn in a mission briefing. Ma, ma, Hokage-sama nice to meet you Naruto. Kakashi greeted lazily. Hiruzen sighed at the cycloptic Jonin's antics. And last but not least is Yamato. Yamato gave a nod in acknowledgement. Nice to meet you Naruto-san. Naruto bowed in respect before speaking. A pleasure to meet all of you. As I'm sure you already know I am Naruto Uzumaki. Has Hokage-sama already explained the details of the mission? Not yet Naruto. The old man just gave us a brief rundown that we're your escort to a hidden Uzumaki cache. Asuma stated causing Hiruzen's to mutter something about disrespect. Right it must be slipping in his old age. Naruto started but soon had to dodge a paperweight. Anyway yes you are right. The cache is located just over the border high no kuni shares with you no kuni. The exact contents of the cache are unknown besides that it contains my clan's collective knowledge and artifacts. However I was able to have my clones do some research last night in my compound. Apparently the cache is protected by a blood seal that can only be openers by someone from the royal Uzumaki line. The main concern however is that apparently the cache is guarded. Guarded by what? Kurunai asked. Unfortunately I don't know. My clones still haven't found anything in my library. Naruto stated. Just how many cage bunshin can you make? Kakashi asked putting away his book as the conversation was becoming interesting. Naruto thought for a moment before answering. I've yet to actually make enough clones to wear me out. I have 200 at my compound now well when they run low on chakra they disperse in groups of two. You have them dispersing in groups. Hiruzen stated nodding in approval. Yes, Hokage-sama. Naruto replied. Very well you all know the mission. Kakashi I am placing you in charge. It should only take you about two days to reach the location I expect you back the day before genin placements, dismissed. Hiruzen stated receiving a round of yes Hokage-sama. Kakashi turned to the others in the room. Pack for a week-long trip and meet at the west gates in 30 minutes. He stated before disappearing in a swirl of leaves, a technique Naruto recognized as a leaf shunshin. He was soon followed by the other three jonin leaving Naruto and the Hokage in the office. Damn I've got to learn that. Naruto stated before turning to leave only for the door to fly open. A little kid with a long blue scarf came charging into the room. I've got you this time old man. He yelled only to trip over his scarf and fall face first onto the floor. Naruto sweat dropped while Hiruzen shook his head in exasperation. The boy quickly jumped up and looked around before pointing at Naruto. Hey what's the big idea tripping me like that? Naruto deadpanned as he looked at the child while crossing his arms. Kid you tripped over your own scarf. No. You tripped me and you better apologize. He shouted only to have Naruto yank him up to eye level by the scruff of his shirt. Listen here kid you tripped because your scarf is too long for you. Naruto would have continued but was interrupted as a man wearing a bandana with dark glasses appeared in the room. Okajama I'm sorry, but the honorable grand he began only to stop as he saw Naruto holding the child up. You hooligan. 
released the honorable grandson Konohamaru Suratobi at once. Konohamaru had a smug smile as he looked at Naruto only to be shocked. And. I don't care if he was the old man's botchan. He stated dropping the boy on his ass. Jiji, I'm off. He stated before leaving the room. The man looked gobsmacked before pushing his glasses up and clearing his throat. Honorable grandson you would do well to stay away from that boy. You need no distractions now come we must return to your training. He stated before looking around the room finding the boy was gone. Hiruzen spoke up seeing as the man's rant had come to an end. I believe he went after young Naruto. He stated and stopped the man before he could leave. Now just am I new to Bisu I believe we need to have a discussion about your attitude. Hiruzen stated with a firm tone. The now named Abisu could only gulp in response, knowing he had slipped up showing his disdain for the Kyubi container. Fifteen minutes later. The Ving returned to his compound and retrovit necessary supplies for his mission, Naruto was now on his way towards the western gates when he noticed he was being followed. Touring down an alleyway he made a cage bunchen before taking to the rooftops. His clone exited the alleyway and continued on, while the original observed from a distance before noticing the boy from the office was hiding in an alley and moving to another one every so often when the clone got too far away. Just as the boy entered another alley Naruto dropped down behind him silently. Now standing just behind the boy he spoke in a hushed tone. So who are we watching? Ah. As expected the boy nearly jumped out of his skin being scared by the sudden appearance of Naruto. W what the hell be but you were just right there. He sputtered pointing down the street. Nope that was just a clone. Naruto stated still trying to rein in his laughter. That's awesome boss. Boss. The younger boy gave Naruto a large smile. Yep you're strong and don't treat me any differently than anybody else. I want to become Hokage so you're my boss. Ibisu sensei is always going on about having all the shortcuts to becoming Hokage. Naruto snorted at that. Konohamaru right? Naruto asked at the young boy. Seeing him nod Naruto decided to give him the same advice he had been given. There's no such thing as shortcuts when you choose to aim for becoming Hokage. The Hokage sees the whole village as his family and needs to be strong enough to protect that family. The only thing that will get you there is hard work and lots of it. When he finished talking Konohamaru had stars in his eyes before they were replaced with a look of determination. You better be ready to call me Hokage-sama boss. So let's start what are you going to teach me the young boy asked excitedly. Naruto deadpanned he was just out of the academy, and while he was further along than most of his classmates, he wasn't that great since when he practiced it had to be in secret. There was also the small fact he didn't agree to teach anyone. He was about to shoot the young Sirotobi down before a thought crossed his mind, causing a foxy grin to appear on his face. Tell you what Kono I have a mission I need to leave for soon. So I'm going to give you a task and if you complete it, I'll teach you something when I get back. He offered causing the younger boy to get excited. Just name it boss and I'll have it down in no time. He stated. Alright then, your task is to sneak into the Nara clan compound with animal friendly paint and place a hand print on three different deer without scaring them off. You then have to sneak out without getting caught. If you scare the deer off or get caught you need to try again. He stated causing Konohamaru to look at him in astonishment before he began running out of the alley, confidently promising he would have it done before Naruto got back. Naruto laughed to himself as he made his way towards his destination once again. He was sure the Nara clan wouldn't mind after all asked he was invited to dinner by Shikamaru his father Shikaku had said the clan members watching the deer had gotten lazy. They would either shape up or Konohamaru would be on his level in stealth in no time. Approaching the gate he noticed only Kurinai, Tenzo, and Asuma were present. Tenzo and Kurinai looked annoyed while Asuma looked amused. Where's Kakashi-senpai? Naruto asked getting their attention. Late just as your gen in NY refer to Kakashi as senpai. Kurinai asked annoyed the blonde and Cyclops were both late. I ran into a distraction on the way here that was begging me to teach him. As for calling Kakashi senpai it seems appropriate as he and you three are my seniors in the shinobi corps. It would be inappropriate to call you sensei as Joan and sensei have yet to be assigned and to my current knowledge, none of you have any students. Of course I could always refer to you and Asuma senpai as Nai-san and Nisan. He stated amused as she and Asuma looked at him confused. And why would you refer to either of us as that? To my knowledge we aren't related in any way. Asuma asked still unused. He of course had a good idea why, but wanted to hear it from the boss's mouth. Oh well I figured that would be an appropriate way to refer to my mother's students. He answered nonchalantly. H how Kurinai tried to ask. I found my mother's diary. She talked about her personal thoughts on a lot of things. He stated before seeing their concerned looks. And no she never made any mention of my father. She usually used some kind of cute nickname. He stated causing them to sigh in relief. Just then Kakashi appeared in a standard shunshin. Oh good I see we're all here. Let's be on our way. 
he stated before turning to Naruto. We'll be traveling at low tune and speed, think you can keep up. Normally they would travel at a speed that could accommodate their client, but Kakashi had decided to use this as an excuse to test Naruto's speed and stamina. Receiving an affirmative nod from the blonde he spoke again giving an eye smile. Good, we'll be using the diamond formation I'll take you will be in the middle using your sensory abilities to keep a lookout for anything. Asuma I want you on the right. Kurinai take the left, and Yamato will bring up the rear. Any questions? He asked. Seeing no one speak he nodded. Good then let's go. And with that the group of five had departed heading for Yuno Kuni. The group of five leaf shinobi moved quickly jumping from branch to branch. They had just packed up camp from the night before. Having covered three-fourths the distance to you, no Kuni Kakashi had decided to make camp so they would arrive at the cache with plenty of energy if anything were to go wrong. Speaking of the copy ninja he took a discreet glance over his shoulder to Naruto, who was talking animatedly with the other jonin. Kakashi didn't admit it, but he was impressed with Naruto. Not even three hours after leaving Konoha he had decided to pick up the pace to mid in speed, and Naruto was still capable of keeping up if even a little slower. In hindsight Kakashi should have known better since Naruto was infamous for outrunning Anbu and some Jonin after his pranks. He was brought out of his musing as Asuma brought up an interesting subject. So kid some of us here put our names in for Jonin sensei this time around. Anything you can tell us about your class? The smoking Jonin asked. Naruto raised an eyebrow what do you want to know? He asked. Personalities, their strengths, and what you think they could work on. It's obvious your observation skills are pretty good, so you must have picked up a thing or two. Asuma replied hoping to get a read on his future team, as well as test Naruto's ability to read into people. Naruto nodded taking a few minutes to gather his thoughts. Well I know about the true genin exam, thanks to mom's diary, so let's start with the ones most likely to pass. Naruto stated receiving a nod from Asuma as Kurinai moved slightly closer to hear everything. Starting with the most likely team which would be the traditional Ino Shikacho trio. Shikamaru is probably the smartest person in our entire class. In fact I'd call him a genius. The problem is that he's way too lazy, so whoever becomes his sensei will definitely need to find something to interest him maybe even introduce him to something new. He explained. Shikamaru may be one of Naruto's closest friends and probably one out of three that knew he was faking being an idiot, but his laziness could potentially get himself or a teammate killed. A genius. I've seen his grades Naruto has weren't much better than your altered scores. Kurinai stated with visible confusion. Naruto snorted that's because NI quote tests are too troublesome. I know Nara are lazy, but he is an extreme case. Asuma nodded understanding what he meant. What would you recommend? He asked. For Shikamaru it would probably be best to introduce him to something challenging, but not too out of the box. I gave his mother a book on barrier ninjutsu for him. I would find a way to bring that up. Naruto stated before moving on. Choji is pretty decent in his clans to jutsu and clan arts, but he really has a problem with hurting people. That's not a bad thing, but he really needs to talk to someone about it. Finally there's Ino Naruto stated before letting out a long sigh. What's wrong with Ino? Kurinai asked. According to Academy records, Ino was pretty average in most areas lacking only substantially into jutsu. Ino is a fanatical fangirl. She is constantly dieting and refuses to train. Remember I said I gave Shikamaru's mom that book? He asked receiving a nod from the red-eyed woman. I was over for dinner the same night as one of the original trio's weekly get-togethers. Inoichi Sama was very vocal of his displeasure with her attitude, including how she was very against training because it would make her too bulky for her sasu-kun. Naruto explained causing Kurinai to understand as she had a deep dislike of fangirls in general. She needs to be brought back to reality before any possible progress could even be attempted. Not to mention she takes things at face value, so when she's inevitably paired with Choji and Shikamaru, she'll become extremely bossy which will strain team cohesion. If their sensei can do all of this, then they would be smart to introduce more individual skills as well to compensate if the three get split up. He explained. Asuma looked forward seemingly in acceptance, but anyone that knew him knew he was thinking seriously. What he heard was troubling to say the least. His original plan was to introduce the three to more formations for their trio, but after Naruto's information, it would be wise to build up their individual skills, as well as dealing with their individual problems. Moving on to the next team. I can hazard a guess that there will be a tracking and recon team formed, which will most likely consist of Shino Aburam, Kiba Inuzuka, and Hinata Hayuga. Shino is probably the most well-rounded in our class. His biggest flaw would be in Tajutsu, but if he can get past that and incorporate a few failsafes if he were to face someone who's faced an Aburam before then he'll be just fine. Kiba is pretty good in Tajutsu, but is lacking in the department of long range, so giving him a few Jutsu plus working on his brashness will go a long way. 
Finally is the most troubled individual of this possible team, Hinata. Naruto stated missing the slight bristling of Kurenai. Hinata has major confidence issues due to her father distancing her and her clan, labeling her a failure due to her inability to use something she will never be able to. He stated. Kurenai scowled angrily at Naruto. And just what makes you think she can't use the Juken? She asked defensively as she had been assigned to tutor Hinata by her father. Naruto shook his head. The Juken relies on rigid and firm stances developed by the Haiga. Most Hyuga have an earth affinity. When I feel Hinata's chakra it feels fluid and constantly flowing. I can only guess that means she has a water affinity. It would stand to reason she would be incapable of using the standard Juken. He explained causing Kurenai's eyes to widen. So it would probably mean that she needs a Tejutsu style more suited to flexible movements. Kurenai stated getting a decent idea of where to start with her team. So what about the remaining gen and excluding yourself? Yamato asked curiously. Naruto snorted in response. Only three besides myself have a chance, and they are the worst with one exception, but also the most likely to pass. He answered. Those three include Sakura Haruno, Sasuke Chiha, and Sayuri Chiha, and I can guarantee that they will not be the team. Bakashi looked back at Naruto genuinely intrigued. And why is that Naruto with your field promotion it's possible you could be placed on the reserves. Naruto nodded. I know that's a possibility and I have no problem with that. It would mean I could bring my Tejutsu up to a better level while I waited as well as further developed my Fuinjutsu and expanded my Jutsu arsenal. He stated before shaking his head. But that's not what I meant. They are the most likely to pass because the civilian council will interfere in any way to stroke Sasuke's ego, because somehow they got the idea he's going to be clan head once Makoto Abasan steps down, which in their minds is when Sasuke turns Jonin. What do you mean I thought Sasuke was the clan heir? Asuma asked in confusion. In response Naruto smirked imagining the look on Sasuke's face when he learns the truth. No Patachi was heir, and since he was never defeated for the title, it's up to the clan head who to name as their successor. He stated before his foxy grin took over. And I know for a fact Makoto Abasan plans on making Seiri-chan her heir, especially after what's happened with Sasuke in recent years. Oh it's Seiri-chan is it? Kurenai asked with a teasing tone. And what do you mean what's happened to Sasuke? Naruto blushed slightly before getting it under control. Well I'll answer that after I answer the original question. First is Sakura Haruno a fangirl that puts Ino to shame ten times over. She only has book smarts and has absolutely no skill in any shinobi art, least of all stealth. She will react violently to anyone that questions Sasuke in any way, shape or form. Her chakra capacity is abysmal only slightly above civilian level he would have continued but was cut off by Yamato. That's not what her file says. It lists her as the top kanoichi with exceptional potential in Jinjutsu and only slightly below average to Jutsu. Yamato stated calmly though inwardly frowning. And I guarantee her file was altered to an exceptional degree. She has potential, but that is only because her exceptional chakra control is due to her lack of chakra. There's also the mention that if she was given the choice of carrying a critically injured squad mate or frowning over a scratch on the emo she would choose the later. He replied turning his head to look the older man in the eyes letting him know just how serious he was. The four Jonin looked at Naruto worried. If what he was saying was true then the Haruno girl would need serious work. Next is Sayuri. You mean Sayuri-chan. Kakashi stated with a perverse giggle. Naruto ignored the man and started speaking again. Sayuri is very well-rounded. Her skill in her family's tojutsu is at least low-tune and maybe even better. I promised Mikoto Abasan not to say anything during the academy so Sasuke wouldn't know, but Sayuri has been taught several Kainten jutsu and has the master to a pretty good degree. She knows several non sharingan based Jinjutsu and is extremely cunning. Sounds like you're speaking from experience Naruto. Asuma stated in amusement. And I've also been wondering about you referring to the Achiha clan head as Abasan. Naruto took a few minutes before he answered. Mikoto Abasan has always been there for me. She's always inviting me over for food or getting me groceries from stores I'm not allowed in or just letting me hang out. As a result I've spent plenty of time with her and Sayuri while Sasuke team just ignored the three of us. He stated clenching his fists before taking a calming breath. Anyway yes I've spent plenty of time sparing with Sayuri, so we have an okay idea of each other's skills, and like me she's held herself back in the academy, but not to such a degree. He stated before he frowned. And finally there's Sasuke Chia. Skill-wise his tojutsu is high genin, but can easily be aggravated, so he gets sloppy. He only knows the academy 3 jutsu and 1 katen jutsu, and he uses no jinjutsu. Mentally I have no idea how the fuck he passed his psych evaluation. Naruto stated causing the others to look at him worriedly, none more so than Kakashi. What do you mean? Yamato asked seriously. The last thing the village needed was another Itachi incident. 
Sasuke Chiha has a serious superiority and inferiority complex, which according to his mother, was a product of his father's attitude. It had only worsened with the civilian council catering to his every whim in hopes of arranging marriages with him, and I've heard that they even want him to place his mother and sister into the Kra to repopulate the Achiha. An idea he's openly admitted to liking. Naruto stated with unhidden disgust. A reaction shared with the others none more so than Kurinai who knew the Kra turned women into nothing more than baby factories. That's why you know Mikoto-sama won't name him her successor, and why you're sure he and his sister won't be placed on a team together. Asuma stated causing Naruto to nod. Yep, hopefully a genin team will straighten him out a bit though. Naruto stated. Bakashi was deep in thought as he turned his attention back to their path. He knew the Achiha boy was arrogant, but he wasn't expecting him to be this bad off. If he passed his team he would have to take special care in working with the boy. Yamato was the one to break the silence. What about you Naruto? It's obvious your file is inaccurate, so having a better understanding of your abilities would be nice. Yamato asked hoping to get a better idea of his potential apprentice. Well you already know about my bloodline and that I can make an army of cage bunshin. Besides that I can use the Academy 3 Jutsu. Though for me using the regular bunshin is impractical because it requires such a small amount of chakra, I can only use it successfully if I make a minimum of 60. He stated causing Yamato to nod in understanding. As for extra skills I'm at the end of level 2 in Fuinjutsu, and in another few weeks I should be at the beginning of level 3. My stealth is through the roof since I was able to practice it by using my pranks. He explained with his foxy smile causing Asuma and Kurinai to hold back chuckles as Yamato's eye twitched in annoyance, having been caught in more than one of his pranks. Of course what Naruto didn't say was that he had been given a few pointers along the way by the Anbu Commander Dragon when he caught Naruto. Besides that Seiri-chan taught me the Katen. Nkakak no Jutsu. As for chakra control I can already do the tree climbing exercise. In terms of weaknesses I have zero aptitude for Jinjutsu since most require such small amounts of chakra. Then there's my Tejutsu as I've yet to find a style that suits me. I also don't know what my element is or what I got from Mizuki, so I'm not sure where to begin with expanding my Jutsu pool. He explained. The conversation would have continued but was interrupted by Kakashi. We're coming up on the location. He stated causing all conversation to cease. After another 15 minutes the group of five had stopped on the edge of a forest clearing with three large stones in the middle. Kakashi turned to Naruto. Okay what are we looking for? Naruto pointed towards the stones. They're the one in the middle should have a seal hidden on it. I need to find it and use a bit of my blood and then the cache should open. The Kakashi nodded before looking to the others. Kurinai and Asuma will stand guard outside while Yamato and I go with Naruto. He ordered before the group made their way to the stones. Naruto spent several minutes looking over the middle stone before finding the blood seal that looked exactly like his clan symbol. Biting his thumb Naruto smeared blood over the seal channeling chakra into it. Soon there was a low rumbling under Asuma and Kurinai, causing both to jump to Naruto's side. The ground where they were standing began to part revealing a staircase. With a nod to the others, Naruto started down the stairs with Kakashi and Yamato behind him. As they stepped off the stairs it they walked into a long hallway with multiple bookshelves all holding various scrolls. Upon closer inspection Yamato noted the scrolls seemed to have a string of seals connecting all of them together. He was about to pick one up before Naruto called out to him. Don't touch that. He screamed causing Yamato to quickly back away. Naruto let out a breath in relief. Those seals are part of a security matrix if you disrupt it, there's no telling what could happen. He explained. There should be a central chamber to release the security seals. He stated and would have continued walking, but stopped as he felt several chakra signatures in front of them, causing Naruto to tense up. Bakashi and Yamato were both at the ready with kunai in hand as they felt the presence of others as well. Soon three figures began walking forward out of the shadows to reveal three women. The first stood slightly behind the other two and looked to be maybe 16. Her long pink hair was held back in a braid with two locks framing each side of her face. She had dark pink eyes and wore an outfit similar to a shrine maiden. The second was older than the other two and looked to be maybe in her early twenties. She had long purple hair tied into a ponytail and deep purple eyes. She wore a brown robe with thick woolen borders and a collar that reveals much of her cleavage and that showed her noticeably curvaceous figure. Over her shoulder she held an ladachi as she stared down the three menacingly. The third and final woman looked to be about seventeen and stood impassively. She wore a black cloak over a cream-colored hakamashita and blue hakama which was worn over a black bodysuit. Her short hair was black and braided on the right side while it was parted to her left, and her eyes were a deep blue. The first stepped forward slightly as she began to speak. Who are you Leaf Nin and why are you here? She asked her tone even yet powerful demanding an answer. Giving a quick glance to Kakashi and Yamato Naruto nodded and stepped forward. 
Greetings, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. He stated with a small bow, causing the two's eyes behind the woman widen slightly. We came here to collect this cash. I apologize as I didn't know it was guarded. There was a tense silence as the woman seemed to be studying Naruto. You are in Uzumaki? She asked. Naruto nodded before deciding to introduce himself formally. Yes, I am Naruto Uzumaki 12th clan head of the royal Uzumaki clan and son of Kashina Uzumaki. There was another pregnant pause before a new voice spoke this one definitely male. The son of Kashina-sama. It stated as an elderly man with white hair and black eyes appeared beside the three women. His attire consisted of an off-white robe with thick black outlines, fastened by a pale brown ribbon on his waist. This hole was also covered another similar robe which was kept unfastened. Finally, he wore a thick pale brown scarf that always covered his mouth, a pair of loose white pants, wooden sandals, black fingerless gloves that attached only to his middle finger over the back of his hands, and a plain-looking thin cane sword. The three Kanoha shinobi tensed not having noticed him in the room as well. The new arrival looked to the woman that had been speaking. What say you Fumiko? He asked. He's speaking the truth. She stated before looking back to Naruto. Though that does raise more questions. Such as why you wear the symbol of the leaf rather than that of Whirlpool, Yuzumaki-sama. I think you should find somewhere to sit. Naruto stated solemnly. Thirty minutes later. Naruto sat back as he watched the four in front of him. He had just finished explaining what he knew off full of Yuzushi Agakur to his discovery of his heritage. The four each had solemn expressions as they had told him they had suspected an attack would come and had sent the four here to protect the cache. They had apparently only aged less than a few months as the seals inside the cache slowed aging to a near halt, allowing them to survive several decades. So it's really gone our home our friends our family stated Shuna, the girl with pink hair as Naruto had learned, as tears began to form. Naruto quickly stood and placed a comforting hand on her shoulder as he tried to give her a reassuring smile. She seemed to calm down slightly returning the smile. Perhaps not everything was lost. The elderly man named Hakuru stated as he stroked his beard. After all there were similar bunkers to this one in Yuzushi Agakur and a few others hidden outside the village. The chance is slim, but there may be other survivors. That is true. Fumiko stated. If it is then we could locate them providing Yuzumaki-sama gives his blessing. She added looking to Naruto. Shuna seemed to have calmed down as she spoke next. W what will we do if we find anybody? She asked. The older woman named Shion spoke next. Shuna Haim is right, we can't just rebuild Yuzu. She stated sullenly. Yumiko spoke once again this time in a firmer tone. We need somewhere to bring them home to. I can't speak for you three however, as possibly the last of my clan I will continue to honor them. She stated before standing in front of Naruto. She then kneeled shocking the three-leaf shinobi. Yuzumaki-sama, I am Fumiko Asahi of the Asahi clan. For hundreds of years my clan were under the Yuzumaki as protectors. I would like to continue as they would have. I pledge my clan to you Yuzumaki-sama. Hakuru and Shion were slightly taken aback by the abruptness of their companion, though it wasn't entirely unexpected. When they noticed Shuna stand as well they looked to her to see her eyeing the both of them seemingly looking for permission. Both smiled slightly as they nodded and stood up walking behind her. She turned to Naruto who was still stunned speechless and kneeled with Hakuru and Shion doing the same. Yuzumaki-sama, I am Shuna Kijin princess of the Kijin clan. When my ancestors were driven from their home the Yuzumaki gave us a place to call home and a purpose asking nothing in return. For that my ancestors pledge their undying loyalty to the Yuzumaki as do I. I pledge my clan to you Yuzumaki-sama. Naruto stood there in shock for a few minutes before finally regaining his voice. I I don't know what to say, but I promise to lead you to the best of my ability he stated give a small bow. The four stood back up and Xion was the one to talk. So what do we do now Naruto-sama? She asked excitedly. Well first we need to get everything here packed away. He stated gesturing to the scrolls on the walls. Then we need to head back to Konoha. If I may. Fumiko stated with a raised hand causing Naruto to nod. All the scrolls here are connected by the security seal. They can be activated by the main seal in the main room. This can't seal all of the scrolls away for transport. She stated. Naruto nodded in acceptance. Okay then Fumiko-chan will you lead the way? He asked before turning to Kakashi and Yamato missing the light pink that dusted her cheeks. Hopefully this shouldn't take very long. He stated. The two nodded and Kakashi turned to Yamato. Go let Kurinai and Asuma know. The process of packing away the scrolls went just as smoothly as Fumiko had said taking only around 15 minutes. It had been a rather simple process. Fumiko performed a string of hand signs and sealed the scrolls away in a large storage scroll. When they had everything the group left the cache being sure to reseal it in case it would need to be reused in the future. Before leaving Kakashi had Naruto form around 20 clones to act as scouts. One day later. 
The group approached the gates of Kanoha after a day and a half. They had stopped a full half day before reaching the gates. They could have made it the same day they left the cache however, not having a chance to actually see Naruto fight Kakashi decided to stop and spar with him. This of course wasn't how Kakashi worded it, but he didn't concern himself with the details which annoyed the other Jonin with his lazy attitude. The group greeted the Chunin guards Azumo and Katetsu as they signed in before leaving for the Hokage office. Shuna questioned the validity of having Chunin guard the gates and was now having Naruto explain that the pair were actually Jonin in skill, but were kept Chunin and assigned guard duty due to their personalities, making them perfect for the post. They were just finishing their conversation when they entered the Hokage office. Having the attention of the elderly cage. Oh team Kakashi you're back sooner than expected. Hiruzen stated looking the group over before he studied the four extra members. His eyes landed on Hakuru, causing his eyes to widen, while well said man looked amused. Well here is in Saratobi you've certainly not been treated well through the years. He stated in amusement. Naruto looked curious. You two know each other? Hiruzen nodded yes Naruto, just before the second war we met while I was on a mission. Hakuru was known as the Cicada Blade of Whirlpool due to his unique sword style. He stated before moving on. Okay your report. He ordered. Hiruzen sat in his chair as he listened to Kakashi and Naruto go through the mission report. As they finished he looked to the four new arrivals. So I take it you would like to become Leaf Shinobi. He stated. He was surprised slightly when they each shook their head no. It was then Fumiko who stepped forward. No Hokage-sama, we are the loyal servants of Whirlpool and the Uzumaki clan as such we will act under his orders. We will still defend the village should it be attacked however we will only go on missions assigned by Yuzumaki Samar approved by him. She stated. The others weren't surprised as they had already learned as much on the way back. Hiruzen nodded he should have expected something of the like. It wasn't the first time such an arrangement had been made. The Hyuga were a prime example as many branch members were relegated to acting as guards for main house members who were on missions. Then there were the Ichiha who would mostly only work with other Ichiha on many missions. Very well in that case I will make note that you will be allowed to join Naruto on missions and that he has the authority to assign missions to you with my approval. He was about to dismiss the four in Naruto before Shion cut in. Naruto-sama is this your father? She asked pointing to the picture of the fourth Hokage on the wall. Hiruzen nearly had a heart attack as his eyes bugged out. He couldn't believe it. Out of everyone in his entire village no one besides his jonin made a single connection besides this woman who blurted it out with a simple question. Naruto froze as he stared at the picture of the man with blonde spiky hair and cerulean blue eyes. The jonin each took a step back as Naruto began letting out a heavy amount of killing intent. Naruto himself closed his eyes as he took in a deep breath. Several questions had just been answered for him, such as why Jiraiya of the Sanin was his godfather, when his mother seemed to always be annoyed when she mentioned him in her writing. Finally Naruto opened his eyes that seemed to have turned icy blue, causing Kakashi and Hiruzen to both barely flinch, as it was the same look Minato had when he was angry. Shion, Fumiko, Shuna, Hakuru, Senpace, and Anbu please step out a moment I need to have a word with Hokage-sama. It came out as a question, but everyone could tell it was an order. Normally Jonin and Anbu would laugh off something so disrespectful from a genin, but none not a single one could stand that icy stare. Each quickly left causing Hiruzen to mutter something about protection his ass. He then went through a set of hand signs activating a privacy seal. I know why you didn't say anything Hokage-sama we already covered as much. That however does not diminish my anger towards others, such as the civilian council, the villagers, or my supposed godparents. He stated causing Hiruzen to nod. He knew he had many failures since retaking the hat, and many were how he handled Naruto's various situations. He had tried many times to convince Jiraiya to come look after Naruto or find Tsunade, but his student constantly made excuses. I know Naruto up until now I've made many mistakes and even more excuses. He stated before his eyes hardened. However that will no longer happen I intend to make things right, starting with acting like a proper Hokage. Naruto nodded. Then that means we will be announcing my full heritage soon. I know you dislike the thought of putting my name out there, but I think my clones have found a way to solve our problem with Iwa. Hiruzen looked contemplative before agreeing. Very well Naruto, the council meeting was scheduled for tomorrow, since you were due to arrive back by then. He stated before undoing the privacy seal. Now you may go and I will see you tomorrow. Send in your escort and my Anbu guard please. Oh and I would go visit Makoto and Tsum. They were both very unhappy you left without a word to them. Hiruzen stated, the last part in amusement. Naruto felt a cold shiver run down his spine as he though of the two matriarchs angry. It wasn't something he wanted directed at him. He nodded before leaving taking the four newcomers to his compound. The Jonin and Anbu entered the office with Hiruzen glaring at the Anbu. He let out a long sigh before looking at Kakashi. Report I want to know what you've learned. He ordered. 
The cashier gave an eye smile before he started. Garrison Saratobi sat in his office glancing at the clock on the wall as he did paperwork. His report from Kakashi the day before had been eye-opening to say the least. According to Kakashi and the other Jonin, if Naruto was accurate his ability to gather intelligence and deduce potential in his allies and enemies was already exponential. Hiruzen of course wasn't surprised by that little bit of knowledge however. No, the young Jonin had made his ability to pick apart situations and people known already through his various pranks. If he had actually used lethal tools, then Hiruzen knew Naruto would have been able to do extreme damage to his shinobi forces. That was one reason chasing Naruto down had become an Anbu training exercise, so that new recruits would become sharper and avoid such traps. The bits that did amaze Hiruzen were the reports on Naruto's other skills. Naruto's speed was already known to be at mid to high chunin, but Kakashi had found that when he pushed himself in combat, Naruto could reach low jonin speeds. His tijutsu was lacking compared to his other skills at high genin. Naruto surprisingly already knew the tree climbing exercise and had decent chakra control being able to fight on a vertical surface for over an hour. His fuinjutsu was at the advanced level 2 stage and he admitted he would be at beginner level 3 soon. Finally Naruto's ninjutsu while limited to only 4 practical jutsu was at high tune into low jonin given how proficiently he used them. All in all Hiruzen could only imagine how far Naruto would go once he started training unimpeded, especially with the cage bunch and no jutsu. There was a sudden knocking at his door that brought him out of his thoughts. Giving the okay to enter the door opened and Naruto entered with Fumiko behind him. Ah Naruto ride on time and Fumiko sent as well. He stated before his eyes caught the hit IA Fumiko wore around her arm and the katana on her hip. It looked like a standard leaf one however the swirl which had been adopted after the Uzumaki clan was colored red. Hiruzen had of course known that was the special hit I ate worn by Kashina. It wasn't hers exactly but a symbol of her dual citizenship. He looked to Naruto noticing he had a similar hit I ate on his forehead. You know Uruka might be a little saddened. He stated in amusement. Naruto let a small smile come to his face as he spoke. Not likely his will always be special. In fact I have it framed in my office. Hiruzen let out a light laugh. You have an office. Be careful my boy paperwork is the bane of all leaders. He stated grumbling about his own never-ending stack of papers. Naruto laughed before getting his foxy smile oh. So I suppose you don't know the secret to beating paperwork? He asked in amusement. Hiruzen's eyes went wide before he was on his knees in front of Naruto. Please. Please my boy teach me. Teach me your ways. He begged causing Naruto, Fumiko, and the hidden Anbu to sweat drop at the supposed professor. Two words Jiji. Naruto drawled milking the situation. Cage. Bunshin. He stated causing the Sandame's eyes to widen. The age cage proceeded to make three clones and had them start on his stack of paperwork. Naruto my boy you have just done what no other cage than your father could. He stated in happiness. So the meeting Fumiko coughed hoping to get the two back on track. The two looked at her before nodding. Hiruzen sat back in his chair as Naruto took one in front of him. Fumiko was offered the other but declined insisting on standing just a few feet away from Naruto. Hiruzen cleared his throat before speaking. Right, so you know Naruto this meeting will be announcing your heritage to the council and instating you as a clan head. Right among other things, Naruto trailed off causing Hiruzen to raise an eyebrow. Seeing the unasked question Naruto decided to elaborate. By the time he had finished the evil laughter between the two was starting to frighten even the Anbu. Though secretly they were looking forward to seeing the looks on the civilian council's faces. It was still an hour before the scheduled meeting when Achunin entered the Hokage office. Hokage-sama, the council requests your presence and demands Yuzumaki. The Chunin stated slightly shaking. It was painfully obvious he had drawn the short straw. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow before he settled on a scowl. Today was the day he took back his village and put the civilian council in their place. Well Naruto it looks like we get to start early. He stated leading Naruto and Fumiko to the council chambers. It took 10 minutes to enter the council room, only to find the civilians chattering away and the clan heads looking as if they were ready to commit murder. Even the normally stoic Hyuga clan head had a small vein bulging. Hiruzen silenced the room as he entered. Hiruzen walked up to take his seat while Naruto stood in the middle of the room. Fumiko moved to stand just behind Naruto. Naruto took this opportunity to take in the council chambers. The Hokage seat was located in the middle of the table. To his immediate left and right were his advisors Hamura Mitakado, Kahari Yudatane, and Danzo Shimura. On the left side of the long table was the Shinobi clan heads. From left to right they were Chosa Akamichi, Inoichi Yamanaka, Shikaku Nara, Shibi Aburam, Makoto Uchiha, the Yuzumaki clan seat, Tsumin Yuzuka, and Hisashi Hayuga. On the right side of the table were eight civilian council members that Naruto didn't even know the names of besides Sakura's mother Mipyuki Hirano. 
He was broken from his musings as Hirazan spoke his voice hard and a scowl still present on his features. Why has this meeting been called an hour early, and by whom? He questioned causing the clan heads to sit straighter than they had and his former teammates to share glances. This wasn't the elderly man that had been holding the hat the past decade this was the professor. The fat balding man on the civilian side spoke up. We of the civilian council did Hokage-sama. It has come to our attention a mistake has been made. He stated. And what is that mistake Musa-san? Hirazan asked with a raised eyebrow. The man then pointed to Naruto. It has come to our attention that boy has been allowed to be a shinobi. He stated with a sneer. It has also come to our attention that it is taken to squatting in an abandoned part of the village. We are also aware the demon Brad had kidnapped several tourists and is holding them under his influence. We demand he be out to death at once and he was cut off as a katana severed his head from his body, letting it fall to the floor. You would do well to show Yuzumaki-sama the proper respect. The cold voice of Fumiko stated. The civilian side screamed in terror as Fumiko flicked the blood off of her sword and retook her position behind Naruto. Mabuki stood up screaming. Anbu arrest her. She murdered a member of this council. She screeched causing most of the room to hold their ears in pain. Hirazin silenced the banshee and civilians screaming the same with a good dose of killing intent. Fumiko here has done nothing wrong except enforce my law. An act one was about to order an Anbu to carry out. Another council member stood up screaming regardless that boy he was cut off as he felt the sharp edge of a blade against his throat. Fumiko glared dangerously at the fool. You will address Yuzumaki-sama appropriately or you will share the late councilman's fate. She ordered. Hirazin held up a hand. Fumiko said I understand your frustrations yet killing every member of the civilian council will only prolong this meeting. Fumiko looked ready to argue, but Naruto cut her off. Fumiko stand down. Killing them is a waste of effort and sword polish. He ordered causing her to sheath her sword and retake her position once again. It was at this moment that the clan heads, saved Tsum and Makoto who had seen him yesterday, noticed Naruto's appearance for the first time. There were several looks of shock at seeing him wearing something other than his usual orange jumpsuit. The ashy spoke looking to Naruto. Yuzumaki-san why did that woman refer to you as Yuzumaki-sama? He asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto looked to Hirazin who smirked and nodded, an act not missed by the clan heads or his advisors. Hayuga-sama that is quite simple. It is the proper way one shows respect to their clan head in a public setting, as I am sure many of your clan do the same. He stated with a small smirk. There were several sets of eyes that widened before Mibuki spoke again. Preposterous, there is no such thing as in Yuzumaki clan. She stated with a smirk, causing the clan heads to glare at her. Naruto glared at her releasing a dose of his killing intent. Just because you were jealous of my mother and had our clan removed from the history books doesn't mean they didn't exist Banshee-san. He stated. You will show us respect boy we are the civilian council. The member from before spoke. His face red with anger at being disrespected. I have no reason to show any of you respect aside from the Hokage and clan heads. Naruto stated neutrally. Regardless, Yuzumaki. Kaharu started. You have made a baseless claim at being a clan head which is punishable by death. She stated. She absolutely loathed the boy as she had lost her only son in the Kaiubi attack. Hirazin fixed his old teammate with a glare. Enough. He bellowed releasing killer intent causing the civilian council to freeze in fear. The clan heads fared a little better as they were only sweating slightly. You would do well to remember I am the Hokage and only I can give an order of execution Kaharu. He stated firmly as he eased up on his killer intent. I have Gna results proving Naruto's lineage. As such he is entitled to take his mother's place on this council. Naruto will also be taking the place of his father as he is the heir of two clans. He stated firmly. The civilians looked ready to argue, but a quick look from Hirazin shut that down quickly. Tsum spoke next while looking at Naruto. Naruto who was your mother? She asked shakily which threw Naruto off a little. He had known the woman since he was seven and she was confident in everything she did. My mother was Kashina Yuzumaki Tsum-san. He stated. He would have used Sama, but he knew she hated such formalities. He was caught off guard when she shot up angrily looking at Kaharu. You bitch. She screamed and attempted to jump the table, but was quickly held back by Chauza. Her Ninkan partner Kurumeru was held back by Shikaku's Kajime no Jutsu. Hirazin looked genuinely perplexed as he managed to calm her down. Tsum-san, what's wrong? Tsum calmed down just enough to speak clearly. That bitch told me he died. I was supposed to take him in if anything happened to Kashina or Tsunade. I was supposed to be his godmother if Tsunade couldn't. She answered tears visible in her eyes. It was a sight many clan heads had never imagined from the strong woman they knew. Makoto of course fared little better. She had known who Naruto was for years and looked after the best she could, but to hear he could have had a proper family made her even angrier. 
Traitorous demon lover that brat should have never been born from that ooh. Another civilian fell dead this time by a kunai directly from Hirazin himself. He was beyond pissed. No that was too light to describe his anger. He was prepared to beat his former teammate to death here and now. Anbu. He called having two drop down. Take her to Ibiki and Anko. She is to be treated as a traitor of Orochimaru's caliber. After they have everything from her she is to be executed for treason, undermining the authority of the Hokage, and contribution to the physical and emotional abuse of a clan heir and daimyo of allied nation. He ordered causing several pairs of eyes to widen. Those orders had never been given before and were reserved for extreme measures. The Anbu obeyed dutifully as Kaharu was dragged from the room literally kicking and screaming. Okajama, you are aware of what this means. Naruto asked his anger visible as he tried to comfort the Inuzuka matriarch. It wasn't what he had planned, but it was perfect to start their plan. Hiruzen looked to Naruto and let his hat shadow his eyes. Yes Yuzumaki Dono, our village has harmed you emotionally and physically, as well as broken multiple points of the treaty between Hai, No Kuni and Yuzushi Agakur. He stated. On the outside he was solemn, but inwardly he was smirking. Babuki looked ready to throw up as she spoke. Hokage-sama you can't possibly. Silence. He shouted angrily. Do you have any idea what you fools have done? He asked rhetorically. Naruto is not only the heir of two clans, but is also the daimyo of Whirlpool. The same village that helped to establish our own. By breaking nearly every point of our treaty with Whirlpool Naruto may take any and all assets from our village that were given to us by Yuzushi Agakur and take it to any village that will take him. This includes the spiral in our flank jackets, hit I-8, the barrier that strengthens our walls, and any clan that were sent our way by Whirlpool. He stated causing everyone's eyes to widen. If Naruto was to take such an action not only could he leave the village with the strongest biju, but he could easily cripple the village economy by stripping the village of its symbol and cripple the village defenses by removing their barrier. Uzumaki Donohamura began after a tense moment of silence. What can we do to atone for the mistakes committed by fools and bigots? He asked. Hamura had never gone out of his way for the boy, but he certainly didn't despise him. No if anything he respected that the boy had managed to maintain his sanity. The clan heads each looked on as Naruto closed his eyes in thought. Tsum knew immediately if he left she would take her whole clan with him. Inuzukas were loyal to a fault and she had failed her best friend. Sure she had him over for the occasional dinner or to hang out with Kiba and Hana, but if she had known he was Kashina's son, she would have done more. She would have fought harder to adopt him and would have taken him in as if he were her own flesh and blood. She would make up for it if it took her the rest of her life. The Sashi was having similar thoughts as Tsum. He wasn't particularly close to Kashina, but he could hazard a guess as to his father was. He and Minato had been on the same genin team and were close friends. To see his friend's son treated as trash had made him extremely angry. He had never tried to take the boy and unfortunately, as he was trying to navigate raising his daughters and trying to figure out how to help his nephew. Shikaku, Inoichi, and Choza each looked on in anticipation. They had known the boy for years as he had been a great friend to Shikamaru and Choji and had dinner with them many times. They knew who he was without a shadow of a doubt and were prepared to support him. Shibi seemed impassive, but if anyone listened closely they could hear the distinct buzzing of his hive. He had logically been able to deduce the boy's parents, and while he had been friends with Minato, they hadn't been particularly close. Shibi however did respect the boy as he was similar to his own clan. He was disliked and avoided because of something he contained that no one understands. Bakodo was watching Naruto intently. She had known of Naruto's real personality the entire time and could understand most of his thought process. It honestly scared her how he was such a perfect blend of Kashina and Minato. She knew Naruto wouldn't be leaving, but he was playing his hand carefully. Finally Naruto opened his eyes. Well Hokage-sama as it was your civilian council that acted against me, it would only be fair they be the ones punished. He stated with an unseen smirk. Anzo however noticed the small movement and was quietly watching. He had originally wanted the boy for his own purposes, however things had changed. He had begun to feel his age and knew he wasn't fit for the title of Hokage. At one time he would have used this opportunity to gain the boy's loyalty, but he was past that. He was quietly watching now however. He had wanted to train the boy, believing to leave him to the village was a foolish decision. Hiruzen however misunderstood his reasoning and prohibited him from doing so. He had watched as the boy was held back. Now though it was apparent the boy had played everyone by hiding his abilities. If he was capable of such a thing then perhaps the village wasn't completely lost. Perhaps the next generation could rise to surpass the previous one. He would need to wait and see however. He had more pressing concerns at the moment. His man in the Hokage's office had failed to check in for several days and was presumed to have been caught. Danzo was no fool he knew what it would look like to Hiruzen and he needed to move carefully lest he be killed off. 
He might have dialed back his ambitions, but that didn't mean he was ready to give up entirely. Pirazin was about to answer when another civilian council member spoke up. Seriously didn't these idiots learn anything? And why would we be punished we did what was necessary for this village? Your mother came from a dead clan, and your father must have been a fool that tripped and died on his own kunai. The man stated. Naruto looked amused oh. That's rich since you're constantly shouting about finishing what he started by ending my life. I mean my father was the man who sealed Kaiubi inside me. Naruto stated with a smirk. The civilians attempted to protest, but Hiruzen had enough and stated firmly Naruto was indeed Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Uzumaki Dono, I believe you were about to tell us your proposal. Shibi stated. Naruto nodded. Yes Aburam Sama, thank you. As I was saying your civilian council were the ones to act against me. So I think it only fair they have some privileges revoked. He stated with a smirk. For starters the Shinobi Academy is removed from their control and returned to the Shinobi Council. Secondly they are prohibited from blacklisting stores simply for selling anyone connected with me or myself, non-spoiled food items. He stated causing several clan heads to throw angry glances at the civilians who were starting to pale. Third, the civilians will be relegated to an actual advisory role on this council. They have shown they are incompetent and untrustworthy with the privileges of their office. Naruto stated. The civilians were attempting to argue but were silenced when they felt the cold steel of the blades the Anbu had at their throats. Hiruzen calmly waited a few moments making it seem as if he was thinking when Hisashi spoke. Uzumaki Dono, while I agree with your demands there is a gap left in our government structure. The civilians may be incompetent, but it remains there would be several seats on this council left unfilled. He stated before pausing. Naruto nods for him to continue as he was interested where it would be going. It is important because by charter there must be 16 seats on the council, besides the Hokujin Elder Council, to allow for a fair chance for a verdict to be presented. He finished. Truthfully Hiashi was ready to fully agree, but wanted a chance to test the boy. Naruto smiled slightly. Hiashi had just handed him the perfect opportunity to increase his standing in the village. That's actually quite a simple fix Hayuga-sama. There is a portion of this village's population that makes up our shinobi forces and has for decades. Unfortunately to many of these people they have been forgotten, and as a result they have been distanced from our village unintentionally. Naruto stated as a small smirk made its way onto Hiruzen's face. Shikaku looked intrigued for once as he asked. And just who is this population? Naruto smirked he was almost there. The population I'm referring to is that of the minor clans of our village. We have eight major clans in our village that sit on this council. We have just as many minor clans that make up our forces. Their numbers of each may be lower than our major clans, but they are just as important. The Kahaku clan for example, makes up a major portion of our border patrol, as their clan is mostly located outside the village. The Kekei Genkai of the Anakuma and Karama are exceptionally dangerous and could prove more useful if given a more active role in the village. The Izuno clan while not having a particularly stellar record after the Second Great Shinobi War, just need a reason to do better. I was placed in two classes before my last one. In one of those classes I met a member of the Izuno clan. She has great potential in the art of Yuinjutsu with their Nakakaburi relying on it, but her clan had stagnated due to their bad records. Do I need to continue? He explained before asking rhetorically. The clan heads and advisors shared glances with each other. The more they thought over the proposal the more they had to admit it made an awful lot lot sense. The minor clans had been neglected for decades, resulting in drastically reduced performance records from many of them. This plan however would show them they were acknowledged and hopefully kickstart their development once again. Hiruzen cleared his throat as he addressed the room. I can see much merit in Naruto's proposal. As it deals with a change to the village charter and governmental structure, this will be put to a vote by the Shinobi Council, Elder Council, and myself. Are there any objections or amendments to this proposal before we cast our votes? He asked. Babuki having enough shot to her feet. You can't be serious. This is an outrage. We should be allowed to vote as well. She raved as everyone covered their ears. She would have continued, but a swift chop to the neck courtesy of Naruto shut her up. There is in motion for the Anbu to appear. Remove the civilian council at once. I think we've all had enough shouting for once. He ordered. The Anbu complied guiding the civilian council out. They were prepared to argue, but were silently warned against it as the Anbu reached for their blades. They were stopped however when Naruto spoke. A moment Hokage-sama. There is one last thing and this is a warning to the civilian council I've been entered into the CRA willingly. The civilians will not in any way shape or form try to extort, harm, or ostracize my clan, wives, or future children. He stated before releasing an extreme amount of killing intent towards the civilians. 
If they are at any time put through what I was I will hunt you I will break you, and then I will personally set you down in front of the gates of hell, and even the demons will pity you when I'm done. He stated his voice cold and emotionless. The civilians had scrambled over each other as they tried to get out of B room quick enough not to soil themselves. When they were gone and the large doors closed again, Naruto relented his killing intent before turning to the rest of the council. The smirking Tsum spoke with a feral grin. If you need any help pup just ask and I'll help you maul them. Naruto returned the grin tenfold. Of course Tsum san. Pierce and cleared his throat. Now onto the vote, all those in favor. He asked. There was a moment of thought before everyone raised their hands. Good then the proposal has passed. There will be another meeting in two weeks where we will inform the clans that will receive the seats on the council. Now, Naruto you will be taking your father and mother's seat on this council starting next meeting. As your father's seat was due to his previous station as Hokage, I'm afraid it doesn't actually hold a vote. He stated causing Naruto to nod in acceptance. Now this meeting is adjourned as team placements are tomorrow I will be meeting with the Jonin sensei to assign teams. If there are any issues that you wish to address with me, I ask that you do so soon as this will take up a significant amount of time today. He stated before turning to his advisors. Hamura and Danzo I wish to speak with the two of you in my office immediately. He ordered. Seeing the Hokage get up to leave Naruto address the clan heads. If the clan heads will wait a few moments there is something I wish to address with you myself. He requested. The clan heads shared confused looks before nodding and sitting back down. Once Hiruzen had left with his remaining advisors, Naruto turned to the clan heads. Mikoto was the one who addressed Naruto. Naruto-kun what did you want to discuss with us? She asked genuinely curious. A few days ago the day after I learned of my mother I commissioned a team for an air ranked mission outside the village. The mission was to recover a cache that my mother had found that contained our clan's collective knowledge and artifacts. We returned yesterday just afternoon, and I spent the majority of the day going through what was in the cache, mainly to sort it in my compound library. While doing so I found several items that were of great interest. He explained. Inoichi raised an eyebrow. What did you find Naruto? The answer that I need to explain a little about my clan. You see we didn't directly get involved in the Great Shinobi Wars. He stated receiving nods as they knew that much. However we did go to battlefields as a third party to help the injured that had been left behind or collect items of extreme importance so they could be returned to their proper owners. He stated causing many to look shocked at that bit of information. As the second great shinobi war raged on before our downfall, we continued this and many items important to each of your clans. He stated as Fumiko walked beside him and handed him a sealing scroll. Naruto began unsealing an item as he approached Shibi. For the Aburum we recovered these scrolls that detailed toxins that could be extracted from several kinds of rare insects, as well as where to find them. He stated handing the scrolls to Shibi. The man looked over the scrolls before adjusting his glasses. Thank you Naruto-san, these were a great loss to my clan and will be put to good use. Naruto nodded with a small smile before he walked over to Inoichi. For the Yamanaka these scrolls of herbs and plants that have both medicinal properties and hallucinogenic properties were recovered. He stated hand the man the scrolls. Like Shibi Inoichi looked over the scrolls his eyes widening as he read. Finally he had a large grin as he looked to Naruto. Thank you Naruto these were lost from my clan's personal archives. Naruto returned the grin before replying. No problem Inoichi-san. He stated before walking over to Tsum. For the Inuzuka these blueprints and scrolls on clan techniques were found. He stated handing them to Tsum. As she looked over them she discovered they were indeed lost techniques from her grandfather. Thanks pup having these back means a lot to me. She stated with a feral grin which Naruto returned. He then approached Shikaku and handed the man a scroll. This is a little different Shikaku-san. We didn't recover anything from your clan, but we did have a contract with Inara before the Second Great Shinobi War started to develop special tags that when attached to an opponent's shadow paralyzed them. He stated. Shikaku nodded lazily as he looked over the scroll, seeing it was a blueprint for making the tags. He had been younger, but he definitely remembered his father stating how they would have been useful. Thank you Naruto-san, but as it was a contract what did my clan owe the Uzumaki in return? He asked. Naruto waved him off nothing consider us even as an apology for being late. He stated with a foxy grin. The older man gave a small smile before he muttered something about troublesome blondes. Naruto approached Mikoto as he took out two scrolls. Yours are also a little different Mikoto Abasan. The first is from Izumi Acha. He stated causing Mikoto's eyes to widen. Izumi was one of the most skilled Ichiha to come out of her clan near the beginning of the Second Great Shinobi War. As she read over the scroll, it detailed a heavily modified and improved variation of the Ichiha Interceptor Fist Dejutsu style. The second was actually from around the time Madara Ichiha defected. It was held because the clan head at the time was afraid it would be destroyed. 
he stated handing the scroll to Makoto. When she opened it she was amazed. It detailed a variety of Raiden Jutsu that she hadn't heard of before. She silently agreed that it most likely would have been destroyed, as most Uchiha had been too prideful to use anything other than Katen Jutsu. Naruto I really don't know what to say. This is incredible. She stated in gratitude. I'll make sure these are put to good use. She stated with a smile. Naruto returned the gesture as he approached Hisashi. Naruto then unsealed a much larger scroll. It was the size of a large ceiling scroll and had gold trimmings. Hisashi's eyes widened as he immediately recognized the scroll. For the first time in many years Hisashi's emotions began to show as he looked shocked. Na Naruto-san is that what I think it is? He asked. Naruto simply smiled as he nodded and handed the man the large scroll. Yes Hisashi-sama, this is the summoning contract for the owls carried into battle by Niji Hayuga, your grandfather I believe. He stated. Hisashi nodded as he recalled hearing stories of his grandfather. His nephew had even been named after the man. He touched the scroll once more wondering if it was a Jinjutsu. Finally he looked at Naruto. How? It was recovered nearly a week before the fall of Yuzushi Agakur. The clan head at the time had a note with it to have it returned as soon as possible. Unfortunately you know why that never happened. He stated. The Sashi was quiet for a moment before speaking again having gotten his emotions under control once again. Naruto-sen I truly cannot thank you enough. You have returned an important piece of history to not only me but to my clan as well. I promise you this will never be forgotten. He stated giving Naruto a slight bow. Naruto returned the gesture before speaking again handing Hisashi a smaller scroll. You're quite welcome. Just so you know this is something from me personally. I think it could help you with a problem I know you've been having. He stated. Hisashi nodded and put the scroll away for later. Naruto finally walked in front of Choza as he unsealed another large scroll. This one was red with black and brown rings. I'm sure you already know, but this is. Toza cut him off as he took the scroll in awe. The summoning contract for the bears carried into battle by my great-grandfather and thought to have been lost in the first great shinobi war. Naruto nodded. Yes, according to records I read it was recovered just before the start of the second great shinobi war. Naruto explained. Toza nodded in gratitude. Thank you Naruto, this had been with my clan since the warring clan era. Choza stated. He began thinking to himself that he may need to talk with Choji about signing the contract. Naruto nodded. You're welcome, as the new clan head I wanted to ensure these items were returned to their proper owners. Naruto stated before turning for the door and motioning for Fumiko to come with him. As they exited Tsum laughed kids already thinking 10 steps ahead. Get favor with us by returning priceless relics. She started. Makoto continued. And gain the loyalty and respect of the minor clans by getting them on the council. She had to admit she was impressed. There's also the possibility of annexation. A minor clan small enough could benefit tremendously by allowing themselves to be annexed under the Uzumaki clan. Hisashi added equally impressed with the boy's political prowess. Inoichi cleared his throat. Anyone else feels slightly inadequate considering in a single meeting he deafened the civilian council and set the stage to bring the minor clans to his side. There were several nods of agreement as the clan heads began exiting the meeting room. Okage's office. Hiruzen sat behind his desk looking at the man in front of him. Hamura stood off to the side watching. Hiruzen had just finished outlining a list of demands for Danzo and was patiently waiting the man's reply. Finally Danzo spoke so my route will be reinstated under my command, however every operation and posting will go through you directly. He stated. Hiruzen nodded. Yes and you will provide me a full list and dossier on all route operatives. You will also not be allowed to train any others. He stated firmly. Anzo was quiet for a few moments before he stood up and bowed. It will be done Hokage-sama. He stated. Hiruzen dismissed him, and Hamura soon followed. An hour passed before the jonin of the village began to trickle in slowly one by one, before the office had been filled by the prospective jonin sensei. Well all but one masked jonin with gravity-defying silver hair who just so happened to be missing. Some of the other jonin were beginning to grow annoyed when there was a sudden swirl of leaves. Sorry I missed the meeting I Kakashi began but stopped when he looked around. But I thought the meeting was over. He stated in confusion. The Kinoichi with short purple hair wearing a tan trench coat scoffed. She was Anko Midarashi a Takubetsu Jonin. No you lazy bastard the meeting is just starting. She stated. Hiruzen cleared his throat getting everyone's attention. Kakashi I told you the meeting was three hours ago so you would show up in time. He stated with an amused smile, causing several Jonin to start snickering at the lazy Jonin. Enough he chided before continuing. Now moving on to team assignments. Team 1 is he continued calling out teams until he got near the end of the list. Finally team 7 will be Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno, and Sai. Team 8 will be Kiba Inuzuka, Shino Aburam, and Hinata Hayuga. 
Team 9 is still in rotation from last year. Team 10 would be Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akimichi, and Ino Yamanaka. He stated before looking to the assembled Jonin. Akashi you will be assigned Team 7. Kurunai you will be assigned Team 8. Asuma you will be assigned Team 10. He ordered before a Jonin spoke. He recognized her as a main branch Hayuga, Hikari if his memory served him correctly. He knew unlike most main branch members, she was kinder and preferred to be more versatile in her skill set. She already had a team, but due to certain circumstances one of her students had left the shinobi forces. It was because of this that she had requested Hinata be placed in her team as an additional member. Okajama, what of Naruto Uzumaki and Sayori Achea? According to mission reports, Naruto graduated by preventing a traitor from fleeing with the Forbidden Scroll. She stated. It hadn't been a huge secret, but it was something that had been spread throughout the Jonin of the village. In fact it had caused many that were wary of the boy to open up a little and give him some respect. And the Ichiha girl was already a graduate being second best Kanoichi. Pearson nodded. Yes, thank you Hikari I was just about to announce them. He stated as he shifted some papers. Naruto was found to have his education and training sabotaged by academy instructors. However he was hiding his true skills the entire time, so I had him evaluated by four of our jonin. His skill set already far exceeds that of an ordinary genin and shows nothing short of a genius. He is lacking in some skills that just couldn't be self-taught however. Sayuri Achiha hit her skills throughout the academy as well. I had her tested by Anbu Niko yesterday to see where her skills actually are. Niko found that Sayuri is also already above genin level. It is because of this that both are being assigned apprenticeships. He stated causing many to look shocked. However there is something that must be done first he stated taking out a jonin flak jacket. Anko this is long overdue. He stated throwing her the jacket. She looked shocked as she tried to speak. Thank you Hokage-sama, but won the civilian she was cut off with a cackle of glee from Hirazan. As of an hour ago the civilian council has been reduced to nothing more than an advisory council. I have the authority to promote and demote as I see fit and I'll be damned if it waited one more day. He told her. She nodded and quickly put the jacket on. Hirazan gave her a small smile before he continued on. Now Naruto Uzumaki is being placed under Yamato who will be in charge of his overall development. Sayuri Achiha is being placed under Anko Midarashi, who will be in charge of her overall development. The two will form Team 11 and will rotate assisting the other genin teams on missions. I am also officially revoking their status as genin. He stated causing many to begin to argue. Though Hiruzen quickly held up a hand to stop them. Both have shown skills far beyond ordinary genin. For this reason I am promoting the both of them to elite genin. With this rank they will be temporarily promoted to the rank of Chunin when on missions with other genin. He stated causing many in the office to look shocked, though they nodded in acceptance. Good that concludes this meeting now everyone who was assigned a team be here tomorrow. Bakashi if you're late I promise I will demote you to genin and have you chasing Tor until you're my age. He stated seriously causing Kakashi to pale slightly and the other jonin to chuckle. Pirazin turned his chair around to look over the village. Things would be interesting in the coming weeks. Naruto walked down the street of Kanoha with Fumiko beside him. Every now and then he would get a dirty look from one of the passerby, but he paid it no mind. The council meeting had gone better than he could have hoped, and he wouldn't let his good spirits be ruined so easily. In fact he was leading Fumiko to one of his favorite places in the village to celebrate. That place being none other than Ichiraku Raymond. A small Raymond stand run by the father and daughter pair had been one of the few places that let him eat without overcharging him or giving him poison food when he was younger. Even with his mask Naruto couldn't bring himself to stay away for too long. It didn't help the daughter of the owner AM had taken to him pretty quickly and would get worried if he stayed away for too long. Yuzumaki-sama where are we going? Fumiko finally asked. It wasn't that she didn't enjoy his company, but her curiosity had finally gotten the better of her. Naruto gave the young woman a warm smile as he spoke. Somewhere I've been treated like family since I can remember. Not to mention the best Raymond stand in the entire village. He stated happily. Yumiko let a small smile grace her as she listened to Naruto speak of the father and daughter that ran the Raymond stand. Naruto had told her and the others bits of the way the village had treated him throughout his life, and it sickened her deeply. Shuna had broken down crying in his arms at how terrible it had been, whilst Shion nearly tried to go on a rampage. Herself and Hakuru had been more controlled as they were used to keeping their emotions in check, yet that didn't mean they didn't have the urge to lessen the village population slightly. With that in mind it made her happy to know Naruto had people that looked out for him. They sound like lovely people Yuzumaki-sama. She stated with her own small smile. You know you can just call me Naruto when we're not in a formal meeting. He deadpanned. It had been one of the only things he couldn't get the four members of his clan to drop. He had managed to stop the formal bowing and many of the other formalities that they had no reason to do while in the compound. So you have told me Yuzumaki-sama. 
she stated still with her small smile. You're enjoying this aren't you? He asked. I'm sure I have no idea what you mean Yuzumaki-sama. She stated though Naruto could swear he could hear a bit of amusement in her voice. He let out a sigh deciding to drop it for now. The pair soon rounded the last corner letting the Raymond stand come into view. As they came closer and closer Naruto couldn't help but suddenly feel as if he had forgotten something incredibly important as a cold chill ran up his spine. It was at this point they were close enough to see a young woman slightly younger than Naruto standing outside the Raymond stand looking around impatiently. She had raven black hair tied into a single ponytail that came down to her mid-back with her hit i8 worn around her forehead. She wore a purple turtleneck sweater and skirt combination with mesh under armor visible on her forearms. She wore black kanoichi shorts under the skirt and had black leggings that came up to her mid-thigh, complete with black shinobi sandals. It was at this point Naruto paled realizing this was his best friend Sayori Ache. She had been out yesterday when he had stopped by to see Mikoto, who had mentioned Sayori was worried. Now Naruto realized he had forgotten to go find her, as he was more worried about avoiding the wrath of a worried Tsum. He was about to turn and run when she seemed to notice him. Naruto Uzumaki. Don't you dare run. She yelled as she made her way to him an angry scowl on her face. Yumiko simply stood back and observed having already deduced who this girl was. She decided to simply watch. Naruto turned around and opened his mouth to say something when Sayori socked him across the face. That's for disappearing on me without so much as a word. She yelled before pulling him into a hug. And this is for at least coming back okay. She whispered. To someone that didn't know the two's relationship this would have seemed a tad excessive. However on Naruto's birthday the year after the Ichiha massacre, Sayori had found him after he had been beaten to near death. Ever since that day she had decided to do whatever she could to protect her friend. So for him to go missing for a couple days with no warning had left her panicking and a complete mess. When she voiced her concerns to her mother, Mikoto agreed near instantly to speak with the Hokage, as she had started to worry as well. When her mother returned she was relieved to hear Naruto was okay, but livid he didn't have the forethought to say anything. As she let him go Naruto was rubbing his jaw. Damn it Sayori chan did you have to hit me so hard. He complained. Be glad that's all I did. I was worried sick about you, and then Ka-san finds out from the sand aim you went on some mission without saying anything. She stated with crossed arms. Naruto had the decency to look sheepish. Sorry, sorry it was a sort of last minute thing. He stated before noticing Sayori staring at Fumiko. Oh right, Sayori-chan this is Fumiko-chan. Fumiko-chan, this is Sayori-chan. Sayori gave a small nod as she spoke. A pleasure, how do you know Naruto-kun? She asked. She didn't like how this woman was standing so close to Naruto. Fumiko seemed amused as she shifted closer to Naruto. I am Yuzumaki-sama's bodyguard and a member of his clan. She stated causing Sayori to look between the two confused. Seeing he had many things to answer Naruto spoke. Let's go in and I'll explain. He stated. Sayori nodded and led the two into the Chirakus. Once they stepped inside the man behind the counter turned to see his newest customers. Naruto. Welcome back we were starting to worry we would go out of business without you. Tuchi said with a broad grin. Naruto returned the gesture as he took a seat with Yumiko and Sayori on either side of him. Hey Oji-san, sorry I had a mission that was urgent. Naruto stated. Tuchi's eyes caught sight of the special hit I ate Naruto wore. About damn time someone told you. He stated causing Naruto's eyes to widen. You knew? He asked in disbelief. Tuchi laughed Kashina was my best customer. I think Raymond addiction is another Yuzumaki bloodline. He joked causing Naruto to laugh. Suddenly a feminine voice came from the back. Two san what's am began when she saw Naruto. Naruto-kun. She shouted pulling his head into her chest as she hugged him. Where have you been? She suddenly asked sternly. If it wasn't for Sayori-chan we would have been worried sick about you. She stated with a pout. Naruto laughed lightly. Well I was about to tell you guys. Do you think we could get our order while we talk? He asked as his stomach growled. The brown-haired girl laughed as she took their orders. The three had their food in 10 minutes. Naruto spent the next 45 minutes recounting what he had been up to the past few days and ending with the council meeting that had just ended. When he finished the father and daughter pair as well as Sayori looked shocked. Finally Sayori spoke. Wow that's awesome Naruto-kun. She stated happy for her friend. I'll say, I'm glad someone finally put those idiots on the civilian council in their place. Tucci stated. It happened more than once that they had tried to mess with his business because he was kind towards Naruto. He was lucky the Hokage had put a stop to it quickly. Naruto snorted. They'll try something else eventually. They're not exactly that bright. Naruto stated the last bit in amusement causing Tucci to laugh. But did you have to submit to the craw? Am asked with a frown. Naruto nodded as Sayori also frowned. Yep, they would have placed me into it regardless. 
by volunteering I can stop them from arranging marriages that I wouldn't agree to. I absolutely refuse to be placed into a loveless marriage. Naruto stated adamantly. The two girls had to admit they couldn't fault his reasoning. AM then adopted a teasing smirk. Oh and do you have anyone in mind for becoming your wives Naruto KUN she asked with a sultry tone causing Naruto's face to redden. Sayori blushed but wanted to get in on it too. Yeah Naruto Kun your first wife must be someone special after all. She asked causing his blush to deepen. I I I he tried to speak but couldn't. There was then the thud as money for the meal had been placed on the counter by Fumiko, who with her own blush stood up. Well thank you for the meal Ichiraku-san, we must be returning to the compound. A pleasure meeting you Sayori-san, AM-san. She stated with a small nod to the two before pulling Naruto with her out of the stand. The two girls pouted at having their fun ruined. Sayori soon stood up as well. Well I should be getting home too. Thanks for the meal. She stated with a small bow before leaving with a wave goodbye. Gucci turned to his daughter who was still pouting. So Naruto huh? He asked in amusement causing the girl to blush. Well I approve just don't go giving me grandkids too soon. AM turned on her father her face now fully red. Too san. She shouted causing said man to laugh. Later Yuzumaki compound. Naruto sat behind his desk in his office with a sigh. He had finally finished having his clones read through the scrolls he had brought back and had a terrible headache. He had made 80 clones specifically to read through the scrolls on his clan's history. Another 30 to read up on the customs. 70 more to read and organize various instructional scrolls that he had separated by ninja art and then by element for the ninjutsu section. He had 100 more he assigned to Shuna to assign cleaning duties. Akiru had taken another 50 to begin teaching Naruto the basic Uzumaki kinjutsu style. Naruto took a moment to remember that he read his clan had required its members to be proficient in at least the basic style. Though many members would later on develop their own style. The styles used by each member would usually differ drastically, depending on that member's chakra nature. Returning to his original train of thought Naruto had made another 20 clones to help Shion with organizing and filling out paperwork he needed to submit to the Sandame. He was definitely happy the purple-haired woman had decided to become his secretary. Though, whether it was intentional or not, he couldn't help but be distracted by the purple suit and pants she wore over a yellow-green shirt that accentuated her already sexy curves. It certainly didn't help she also didn't button several of the top buttons of the suit, which showed a generous portion of her cleavage. Fifteen more clones had been assigned to help Fumiko look through and take inventory of all ninja tools and weapons in the compound. Finally Naruto had decided to really push his Fuinjutsu training and had made 200 clones dedicated entirely to getting started on the beginning of the third level book. Now at present time he had just received the memories of each clone. The clones had finished going over the customs and history of his clan, so now Naruto knew just about anything there was to know. The clones assigned to organization had finally gotten all of the scrolls separated and filed accordingly in the library. The clones left Ashuna had weeded the gardens and made minor repairs to the training grounds, which were the only areas not maintained by seals. The clones he had left to Hakuru had been able to get the basic katas down and could perform them to a satisfactory level. Though Hakuru had told the last one he still needed to gain experience using the style before he could advance further. The clones with Xian had gotten most of the paperwork done and filed appropriately. Though there were a few that apparently had been left by his mother, Xian had found that she thought he should look at personally. The clones with Fumiko had taken inventory and had made a list detailing what ninja tools were on hand and had organized the weapons accordingly. Finally his Fuinjutsu clones had practically blown through the beginner book of level 3 and had already gotten halfway through the intermediate book. They had found that level 3 wasn't difficult but would have taken a single person forever due to the intensive theory it was getting into. That had been Naruto's main problem with the first two levels and he was happy to have found a way to get through it quicker. Though as he was experiencing now have essentially the experiences of 200 people do Fuinjutsu study was exhausting. There was a soft knock at his door to which Naruto gave permission to enter, inside stepped Shuna. Oh Shuna-chan, what can I do for you? He asked with a strained smile. She shook her head with a small worried look. I came to check on you Naruto-sama. You have team placements tomorrow and need your rest. She informed him. Are you okay? She asked. Naruto nodded. Yeah my head just hurts from all the clone memories I received. With so much to do I made the mistake of forgetting to have most dispel in groups. Now I have a killer headache. Shuna beamed as she had an idea. Then leave it to me Naruto-sama. She stated as she grabbed his hand and lead him to the couch in his office. She sat down and forced him to sit down next to her. He was about to ask what she was doing when he found he was now laying down face up looking at a smiling Shuna. Shuna what are? Now now Naruto-sama just relax and leave everything to me she stated as she began to stroke his hair. Naruto decided to just go with it. 
he soon found his headache was lessening as he was enjoying the feeling of Shuna's fingers run through his hair. Thank you Shuna Haim. He told her. If his eyes were still open he would have taken note she had a small blush. You're very welcome Naruto-sama. The two stayed like that for over an hour before Naruto decided to go to bed, much to Shuna's displeasure. Next morning academy. Naruto walked down the hall of the academy for what would probably be the last time in the foreseeable future. He had decided to get there early enough to enjoy at least a few minutes with his friends before they would be separated into teams. He had told Fumiko to stay home today as he didn't want to spend forever answering everyone's questions. As he entered the room he noticed he was the first there. He decided to take a seat at the back of the room near the window. As time began ticking by more and more students entered the room, some giving Naruto curious looks. Eventually his friends entered the room. First were Choji and Shikamaru who entered together. The two sat down in the row to Naruto's right. Choji was the one to speak first. Hey Naruto. So you did pass. He stated smiling happily. Troublesome, of course he passed Choji. Naruto is easily the best in the class. Shikaku stated. He had known for years Naruto was smarter and more skilled than he let on. Though how no one noticed was beyond him since the blonde could easily prank and evade Anbu for several hours. Naruto nodded. Shikamaru everything is troublesome to you and yes I did pass. He stated before noticing another familiar chakra signature. Good morning Shino. You as well Naruto-san. The young Aburam stated. He and Naruto had developed somewhat of an unspoken friendship. It had started one day when Naruto had kept some kids from killing a few beetles and ever since Shino had started hanging out with Naruto and the others. Yo guys. Shouted Kiba who just walked in. He took a look at Naruto for a minute before grinning. Finally getting serious Naruto. Naruto returned the grin. Damn right I am now that I don't have to hold back anymore. Finally the last two to enter were Sayori and Hinata. The two had made friends with each other rather quickly and Sayori had managed to help Hinata come out of her shell somewhat. The two sat down in front of Naruto. Morning Sayori-chan and Hinata-chan. He greeted. Morning Naruto-kun. Sayori greeted with a smile. Hinata poked her fingers together as she spoke with a blush. Gee good em morning and na naruto k kun She stuttered. She had to look away as she was nearly mesmerized by his smile. It didn't help she had been on cloud nine since last night. Her father had returned from a scheduled council meeting with a smile, something she never saw from him. An hour later he had called her into his office and had made her channel chakra into a small piece of paper. When it had become soaked from water he explained it was chakra paper and was to test her elemental affinity. He then proceeded to apologize for all the years he had berated her for her poor performance with the Jukin. He explained it wasn't usable by someone with a water affinity due to their natural flexibility. He promised to look through the clan's archives for a form of Jukin that would suit her, though he admitted he wasn't sure such a thing existed. The biggest surprise however came from when she was about to leave. He simply stated his approval for her to pursue Naruto. He didn't provide any explanation, but that might have been because she fainted. The group began talking amongst themselves as Sasuke entered taking a seat at the front row. Another 15 minutes passed before a large rumbling was felt throughout the room, only for the door to be thrown open, with Sasuke's number one and two fangirls fighting. I was here first Eno Pig. No I was forehead. The two continued shouting insults at each other as they entered the room and began arguing he would sit next to Sasuke. Finally Naruto reached his breaking point. For the love of Kami shut the fuck up. He roared causing everyone to immediately shut up and look at him. If you two idiots didn't notice both seats beside the emo prince are open. He informed the two. It took a moment for it to register the two had just been told off when Sakura spoke up. Naruto. What are you doing here this is only for graduates. She stated smugly. Naruto rolled his eyes. Wow and you're supposed to be our top Kinoichi. Look at the forehead banshee. He told her in a bored tone. Sakura was seeing Reddit being talked down to by him. Naruto. She screamed as she reared her fist back to try and hit him on the head. She was surprised however when instead of feeling her fist connect her fist was grabbed and she was flung into the wall at the front of the classroom. She slid down the wall letting out a groan. Ino turned on Naruto quickly. Naruto that was uncalled for. She yelled. Naruto looked bored. No it was self-defense and as hard as she was going to punch me she's lucky that's all I did. If she tries it again I'll press charges for her assaulting a clan head. He told her his tone becoming sharp. Ino flinched slightly, she had been told by her father last night Naruto was not just from a clan, but was the head of his clan. Sasuke scoffed. Like a dope like you could be a clan head when an Achiha like myself isn't. Naruto rolled his eyes. And Bruder decides to act like a cage once again. Who owes me five Ryo? He asked sarcastically. And for your information you aren't a clan head for three reasons. One your mother is the head of your clan. Two, even if she wasn't you can't become a clan head until you become Jonan. 
and 30 trailed off looking at Sayori who shook her head no with a smirk. Gree, you're an egotistical piece of shit that's unfit to be a shinobi, much less a clan head. How dare you? I am an Achea. An elite I demand respect as you're better. Sasuke shouted. Naruto snorted. You're about as elite as a fly passing gas. As for respect that's earned like how your sister and mother have my respect. You however are as low on my list of people I respect as the shit in the Inuzuka kennels. No on second thought I apologize he stated causing Sasuke to look smug. That was when Naruto turned to Kiba. To you Kiba I respect the shit in the kennels more than him. Naruto stated causing Kiba to finally let out the laughter he had been holding in. Sasuke was seeing red and was about to attack Naruto when Aruka entered the room. Everyone sit down and shut up. He shouted using his demon head jutsu. He then took a look around before his eyes landed on Sakura who was just getting up from the wall. Why happened to Sakura? He asked with a raised eyebrow. She attempted to assault me and I defend myself. Naruto stated. Sakura looked smug thinking Naruto would get in trouble. Her hopes were quickly dashed however when Aruka spoke again. Would you like to press charges? He asked seriously. Naruto shook his head. Not this time. If she does it again however it will be a different story. He replied. What? Aruka sensei he she tried but was cut off by Aruka. Sakura you are a shinobi now not a child. The moment you put that hit I ate on you became an adult. I suggest you start acting like it. Iruka scolded before looking back at his clipboard, signify he was done with Sakura. The pin cat glared at Naruto before she smirked. She walked up to where he and his friends were sitting. You know Naruto just because you're wearing new clothes doesn't mean you're cool. If you stop trying to be cool like Sasuke-kun I might actually give you one of those dates you're always asking for. She said. Naruto was disgusted and made no attempt to hide it. You really think I ever had feelings for you? He asked causing her to recoil. I've been acting like an idiot for years. I have to say the biggest thing that made me look stupid was chasing you Sakura. He continued causing her to shrink further. Personality wise you are easily the worst girl in this entire class. Hell maybe even the entire village. The reason I chose you was twofold, one you wouldn't accept which was what I wanted. Two you're a complete bitch and I wouldn't feel bad about playing you. Naruto finished causing Sakura to sulk as she went back to her seat. Iruka who had watched the entire thing was shaking his head. He thought Naruto was a little harsh for what he said, but then he thought back to all the times Sakura belittled him or hit him and decided not to say anything. Alright class. He called getting everyone's attention. Pay attention as I call your teams. Team 1 he went on stating teams until he got to one that made him stop. He had to wonder who Kakashi pissed off to get this team. Team 7 is Sakura Haruno, Sasuke Che. He had to pause as a loud shriek of true love conquers all came from Sakura. It seemed she forgot the dressing down she had just gotten. Haruka sighed and sigh, your sensei is Kakashi Haddock. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he looked at the pale boy that had a creepy smile. Concentrating he felt the boy's chakra and felt no emotions. It seemed the boy was one of Danzo's root. He turned his attention back to Haruka as he began calling the next team. He made his kibbutz in Yuzuka, Shino Aburam, and Hinata Hayuga. Your team sensei is Kurana Yuhi he stated. The three shared a look between themselves before nodding to each other. Next team 9 is still in circulation. Team 10 is Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akimichi, and Ino Yamanaka. Your team sensei is Asuma Suratobi. Damn it why did I get the fattest and the lazy bastard? Ino cried in frustration. Ha! Kiba pay up. Naruto shouted holding out his hand. Kiba gave him 200 Ryo grumbling about blonde bastards. Aruka looked gobsmacked at his student's blatant betting. He decided the faster he got finished with team assignments the faster he could leave. Okay that's it for the three-man cells. He stated causing Sakura to shoot to her feet. Aha I told you Naruto didn't graduate. He probably stole that. Jen and Haruno I can still revoke your hit I ate. Haruka yelled having enough of the girl's attitude. Seriously how did she even pass his class? Oh yeah the council made written tests worth the majority of the grade. He thought to himself. Now moving on if there are no more interruptions. Naruto Uzumaki and Sayori Achihaya rank as Jen and have been revoked by Hokage Sama. He stated causing the two to jump up near instantly. Hold on a moment you two. This was done because it was found you were improperly ranked. You have both been promoted to the rank of elite genin. This means that on missions with other genin you two are automatically and temporarily promoted to the position of chunin. In addition you are both being assigned as apprentices but will operate as team 11. He stated only for Sasuke to stand up practically frothing at the mouth. What? How is that clanless loser and that failure higher rank than me? I'm an Ichiha lead I demand that rank. And I demand that dope be punished for insulting me. He shouted causing Sakura to swoon over how cool he was. Sit down Sasuke. Sayuri stated calmly. 
The only failure here is you since the civilian council was the only reason you even passed. She stated with contempt. Sasu crowned it on his sister glaring angrily. How dare you, you should feel honored I'm letting you stay in the clan at all. And why is that dear little brother? She asked you have no authority in the clan period. She stated with a smirk. Sasu tried to charge at his sister, but found several kunai pointing at vital areas of his body. He turned to see several Naruto's standing around him. Sit your ass down Ichiha before I decide to do her a favor and remove you from your clan permanently. Naruto threatened. Sasu wisely sat down though he was still fuming. It was half an hour later when the Jonin had started picking up their genin. Eventually only teams 11 and 7 were left. I wonder who our senseis will be. Sayori stated as she and Naruto were playing cards. Not sure. Naruto replied as he showed his hand full house. Sayori threw her hand down. Damn it I swear I'm never actually betting against you. She stated. Naruto smiled. What can I say I'm just that lucky. So do you think our two sensei would like to play a hand? He asked. Sayori smirked. Don't know I imagine they're tired of hiding outside that window though. She replied. It was shortly followed by a purple blur. Hello Gakis. A woman wearing a trench coat shouted with a snake-like grin. She was shortly joined by a man Naruto recognized as Yamato. Hello again Naruto-san. He stated. The woman looked to the two in front of her. Alright you two meet us on the roof in five minutes. She stated before disappearing in a shunshin followed by Yamato. The two genin shared a glance before they hopped out the window and walked up the side of the building. Arriving on the roof they joined their sensei who were surprised to see the two genin walking up the side of the building. The woman laughed. Well at least you two already have tree walking down. She stated. All right you two first up as introductions. State your names, likes, dislikes, hobbies, and your dreams. She stated. Yamato nodded. I'll go first. My name is Yamato. I like walnuts and reading about architecture. I dislike oily foods and traders. My favorite hobby is reading about architecture. As for dreams, my dream is to fight and defeat someone I respect. He finished. The woman nodded before speaking. My name is Anko Midarashi. I like Dango and my friends. I dislike traitors and rapists. My hobbies include conducting tea ceremonies. My dream is to kill a certain traitor. She stated before nodding to Naruto. All right blondie you're up. Right my name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like my friends, Raymond, and learning about my clan. I dislike traitors and those that can't see the difference between a kunai and the scroll it's sealed in. My hobbies include training and studying fuinjutsu. My dream is to restore my clan and have a family. He stated. Anko looked confused having thought the boy's dream was to become Hokage. All right, you coal eyes. She stated pointing to Sayori. My name is Sayori Achea. I like my mother, Naruto-kun, and Dango. I dislike traitors, rapists, and my asshole brother Sasuke. My hobbies include training and hanging out with my friends. My dream is well I'm honestly not sure, but I do want to have a family someday. She finished. Anko looked curious. You hate your other brother and not the one that killed your clan. She asked. Sayori snorted. Of course I don't hate Itachi Nai. You can ask the Sandame, but this is a SS rank secret. She stated seriously causing the three others to lean in. Members of the Ichiha clan were planning a coup. They were led by my father with only a quarter of the clan against them including my mother. Itachi Nai did what he had to to save the village from civil war. She informed the two jonin causing their eyes to widen. Itachi Nai took on the blame so the three of us wouldn't be treated terribly. She finished solemnly. Yamato looked pensive at what he had just been told. Wait how do you know this? He asked seriously. I'm older than Sasuke and unlike that dumbass I wasn't blinded by trying to get my father's approval that I couldn't hear the whispers. After the massacre I confronted my mother who admitted it was true. Also don't even breathe a word of this to Sasuke. He has no idea. She stated seriously. Anko looked troubled. And why is that? She asked. Sayori snorted. Because if he heard it he would automatically assume that dear old daddy was right and that Ichiha should be in charge. She stated emphasizing the word daddy with contempt. Naruto put his hand on her shoulder. Well if we're getting secrets out of the way I'm next. He stated causing the jonin to panic. Naruto you can't. Sandame Sama's law Yamato began but was cut off by Naruto. Doesn't apply to him or me. We can disclose my condition to anyone we see fit. He stated. Sayori looked curious. What condition? Naruto looked to her. You know how I never told you about why the village treats me the way it does. He asked causing her to nod with a frown. Naruto took the next few minutes to explain about the night of his birth and how his father had sealed the Kaiubi no Kitsune in him, making him a Jinchuriki. When he finished she had exploded. Those bastards. Those stupid fucking idiots. She screamed. I swear when I get my hands on the mile. 
Note following tirade is too explicit for human decency and thus will be skipped. When she finished Yamato and Naruto looked a little green, while Lanko was cackling with glee. Gaki consider me your second pair of hands. She stated. Sayori nodded before pulling Naruto into a hug as tears started to form. They will never hurt you again. She stated resolutely causing the jonin to smile. Naruto hugged back before they released each other a few moments later. Anko had a smile as she spoke. Well usually now we would have some kind of test to evaluate your teamwork, but considering what just happened I think we're good. She stated. Yamato nodded agreeing with her. Alright meet us at training ground 11 tomorrow at 7 sharp. He ordered. Oh why not my training ground? Anko pouted. I am not taking Jenin into the forest of death, regardless of how skilled they are, straight out of the academy. Yamato deadpanned before the two disappeared into a swirl of leaves. Naruto took a moment before speaking. So want to get some lunch? He asked his teammate. Sayori shrugged. Sure, but no Raymond. She stated with a smirk. Oh fine. He whined with a pout. Naruto and Sayori stood in training ground 11 waiting for their sensei to arrive. It was five minutes before seven and both were talking animatedly. They stopped when Anko and Yamato entered the training grounds. But you're both here early. He stated with a nod of approval. Since we won't be conducting a genin test Anko and I have decided to begin training. He stated as he took out a piece of paper. Anko spoke next this Gakus is your training schedule for the next week until we start missions. She stated. Yamato handed the schedule to Naruto who started reading with Sayori looking over his shoulder. 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. endurance training. 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. chakra control exercises. 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. break. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. to jutsu practice. 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. teamwork exercises. 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. lunch. 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. individual training. 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. sparring. He finished before the two looked to their sensei. This will be your schedule starting tomorrow and until one week from now. For today however we will be ending training around noon as Anko and I have a meeting to attend. Yamato stated before looking to Anko. His students followed suit though they quickly wished they didn't. Anko had an evil smirk as she twirled a kunai. What are you waiting for? Start running. She shouted before she began launching kunai, shuriken, and snakes at the two. The two took off running as Anko gave chase. Yamato sighed shaking his head wondering what he did to deserve being paired with one of the craziest jonin in the village. Half an hour later. Sayori and Naruto were panting as Anko stood in front of them with Yamato. She had chased the two throughout the training ground and its surrounding forest. Ten minutes into the chase they had tried fighting back which proved a mistake as Anko took it up a notch and summoned one of her larger snakes to pursue them. The end result, they had been beaten into the ground twice over. Even Naruto with his Uzumaki stamina was winded from the effortless beatdown the snake mistress gave them. Well Gakus don't worry there'll be plenty of time for improvement. She stated with a sadistic smirk. Yamato coughed into his hand. Well just for today we'll be just showing you both the next chakra control exercise. He stated as he walked over to the small pond in their training ground. He then stepped onto the water. However instead of falling into the water he was now standing on top of it. He looked back to his students expecting them to be at least impressed. However they were instead nodding in recognition. Right, the water walking exercise. Naruto stated with a nod. So I'm guessing we have to change the flow of chakra with the water since it shifts. Sayori asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto nodded to what his teammate was saying. Probably, this is definitely going to be more difficult than tree walking. He stated receiving a nod from Sayori. Anko was trying to hold in her laughter as Yamato looked sullen. Yep, got it in one you too. We won't start on that until tomorrow though. This was just to give you an idea of what you would be doing. Well what are we doing instead sensei? Sayori asked. Yamato took two pieces of paper from a pouch in his vest. Today we find out your chakra natures. He stated handing one piece to each of them. What I just handed you both is called chakra paper. It reacts when chakra is channeled through it. Its reaction is determined by what chakra nature you are predisposed to. He explained. Anko decided to pick up where he left off taking out a piece for herself. If the paper shrivels it means lightning, crumbling means earth, wet means water, cutting means wind, and finally she trailed off as her paper burned to ash. Burning means fire. She finished. The two genin shared a look before Naruto nodded for Sayori to go first. She channeled chakra into her paper and soon it reacted. First it shriveled and then caught fire. She looked to her sensei as Anko laughed in joy. Well Sayori-chan looks like you and I both have fire. Not really surprising considering all it should have some connection to fire. Anko stated excitedly. She then took on a puzzled expression. Though I can't do much to help with your lightning affinity. I can ask someone I know to write down the beginning exercises for lightning manipulation though. 
she stated. Sayori looked excited as she nodded to her sensei. Sounds good to me sensei. I'm pretty sure my clan has some Raiden Jutsu I can find as well. Naruto then channeled Chakra into his paper as their conversation came to an end. It soon cut into two pieces with the left side crumbling and the right became slightly damp. Yamato and Anko looked shocked before realization dawned on Yamato. Of course, you already had an affinity towards water and wind. Your earth affinity was gained from when you used your bloodline on Mizuki's body. He explained causing Naruto to nod in acceptance and slight excitement. He had been wondering what he had gained from Mizuki. Well I can help you with both your water and earth affinities. Your wind on the other hand is considerably rare in Konoha. You're in luck however, as the only other wind user is Asuma Siratobi. He stated. Naruto nodded remembering the sharpness of how Suma's chakra felt. Alright, so what are we doing now sensei? He asked. Well today Anko-san and I would be teaching both of you a jutsu each. By the end of the week I want the both of you to have these jutsu mastered. Yamato replied. He and Anko had agreed their students were both farther ahead than ordinary genin. This little test would help them to gauge just how to go about training after the week was over. The two genin shared excited glances. While they might be more advanced than the rest of the graduates, that didn't mean they didn't like to learn a jutsu or two. Sensei what does it mean to actually master a jutsu? I can use a few of my Katen jutsu pretty well, but I don't think they're actually mastered. Sayori asked. Anko nodded with a grin. Mastering a jutsu means that you can use it effectively with less hand seals than usual. When applicable it can also mean that you can use the jutsu with less chakra consumption. Take the Katen. Nkakak no jutsu for example. With enough mastery over the jutsu, it can be performed with a single hand seal and double the output. She explained. Yamato nodded before continuing her explanation. It is also important to note that mastering a jutsu not of your own chakra nature can be much more difficult. For instance, if I were to attempt to master a rate in jutsu, it would be considered near impossible due to it being the opposite of my earth affinity. So does that mean it's not possible for us to use a jutsu that is of a different affinity? Naruto asked curiously. Enko shook her head. Nope, it just means it's more difficult. In fact, the Sandane can use all five chakra natures, even though he's only mastered earth and fire. She explained causing the two genin to nod in understanding. Alright, Sayori I will be teaching you the Katen. Benijigumo, fire style. Crimson earth spider. She stated before going through a series of hand signs. Anko spewed out flames that encircled a small area and then formed a flaming spider that was as large as a full-grown man in the middle. This jutsu is incredibly useful for trapping or cornering an enemy. That spider in the middle there will attack them giving you time to maneuver yourself into a more favorable situation. Anko explained before Yamato used a water jutsu to put out the flames. Whoa. Sayori stated in awe. She knew Katen jutsu could be manipulated into forming dragons with some jutsu. This however was something even better in her opinion. Yamato stepped up next and silently went through a string of about 50 hand signs ending on the bird sign. A large dragon made of water formed from the pond and stayed there for a few moments before dispersing. That is the Suotan. Surikan no Jutsu, water style. Water dragon Jutsu. He stated as he turned to look at Naruto. As you can see it requires a significant amount of time and hand signs to form. By mastering this Jutsu you should be able to form it much quicker. I also chose this Jutsu because while it is a B-rank Jutsu you are, for lack of an official term, a Jutsu sponge due to your immense chakra reserves. He stated causing Naruto to nod in agreement. Anko clapped loudly, drawing the attention to her. Now, until Yamato and I need to leave for our meeting we will be going over these new jutsu. She stated. Several hours later. It was several hours later that Anko and Yamato found themselves waiting inside the Hokage's office with the other Jonin sensei, barring a certain scarecrow of course. The two were quietly discussing the progress of their genin. They were pleasantly surprised to find both Genin had broken the jutsu down into steps rather than attempt them haphazardly. All conversation in the room ceased however when Kakashi appeared in a regular shunshin. A few Jonin stepped away from him however when he looked noticeably irritated. Seeing everyone accounted for Hirazan spoke. Now that everyone is finally here we can begin. Starting with team 1 you will announce your team status. He finished nodding towards a Jonin that had a senbin in his mouth. Team 1, fail. Team 2, failed. Team 3, failed spectacularly. Team 4, did okay though they still failed. Team 5, fought each other to exhaustion, they fail. Team 6, cough they need remedial lessons. I recommend cough they be placed in reserves. Bakashi sighed tiredly. Team 7 passed, though just barely. He stated. Here is in held up a hand to stop Kurinai from speaking next. A moment Kurinai-san, I would like for Kakashi-kun to elaborate. Yes Hokage-sama, I issued the standard bell test as usual. The Achiha started by immediately challenging me outright. 
The Hirono girl loudly proclaimed his awesomeness Kakashi stated with air quotes. After he was soundly defeated the two hid separately. I used a simple Jinjutsu to render Sakura unconscious and then found the Achiha. I used the Doton. Shinji Sanshu no Jutsu on him and retreated to observe. Sai, who had used a unique Jutsu to locate his teammates, released Sakura from the Jinjutsu, causing her to scold him for trying to be cooler than her Sasuke-kun. She fainted three minutes later when she found him still sticking out of the ground. He sighed pinching the bridge of his nose. Okajama, the only reason I passed them is because Sai came up with a plan to trick his teammates into working together. It would be incredibly unfair to fail him along with the other two. Well difficult, I'm sure I can break Sakura of her fangirl phase. If required I'll use Jinjutsu to do it. Sasuke I'm not sure how to deal with him yet, he's exactly as Naruto described which worries me. The Kashi finished. Hiruzen looked concerned as he mulled over what he had just been told. Kakashi I'll accept your decision to pass Team 7. However, I'll be placing them on a probationary period pending further reports. He stated seriously causing Kakashi to nod. Seeing the mask Joan and understood Hiruzen motion for Kuranite to resume. The mate passed. They were tasked with finding me and performed splendidly. Though I did note Naruto's assessment of the three was spot on. She stated proudly with her lips slightly tugging upwards. Team 10 did okay. They had to catch me and managed it. I will note their cohesion needs work as Ino attempted to take control without even attempting to discuss a plan with her Lazius teammates. Asuma stated. Anko and Yamato shared a glance before Anko waved him to go ahead. Team 11 went untested in the traditional sense. During introductions they had revealed their most guarded secrets to each other and us. One of which Anko and I would like to verify with you later Sandame sama Yamato stated calmly to which Hiruzen nodded solemnly. Anko continued. Today, before the meeting, we started their training as well as gave the two a sort of benchmark to find just how far ahead they really are. She stated. Her and I looked to her friend curiously. What sort of benchmark? It was Yamato who decided to answer. We tested their affinities and assigned each of them a single jutsu to master before the end of the week. Oh, what were their affinities? Kakashi asked curiously, his interest piqued. Enko had a sly smirk as she spoke. Sayuri has Raiden and Katen, while Naruto has Doten, Fuiten, and Suiten. The assembled Jonin looked shocked at Anko and then turned to Yamato for confirmation. When the man nodded his head with a slight smile, several Jonin began talking amongst themselves. Everyone quieted down however when Hei heard Asuma's next question. What jutsu did you assign them? Anko's smirk grew as she replied. Sayuri has the Katen. Benijigumo and Naruto has the Suiten. Surikin no jutsu. Her and I looked shocked and then frowned slightly at the two Jonin. There's no way they can learn those jutsu in a week's time, much less master them. She stated. Enko frowned right back. Oh. Care to put your money where your mouth is Nai-chan. She asked defiantly. Now, now, Anko-san, Kurinai-san I don't think Yamato tried to intervene, but was silenced by an icy glare from both women. Kurinai looked back to Anko. What did you have in mind? Enko smirked. End of the week, our team versus yours, I win you buy me Dango for a whole week. She replied. Gurunai placed slightly, Anko went through Dango faster than Naruto did Raymond. And if I win. Anko shrugged uncaringly whatever you want. She replied. Gurunai grinned mischievously. Okay then, when my team wins you're banned from Dango for a whole month. She replied causing Anko to let out a curse. She should have known Kurinai would ask that. Fine, either of you want in. Anko asked turning to Asuma and Kakashi. Asuma nodded. Oh definitely. Your team may be good, but in a week mine will be up to snuff. Bakashi hesitated for a few moments. Sure his team had some skill, but they weren't exactly a team. Then again maybe seeing others work together would benefit them. Kakashi gave his usual eye smile. Sure, I'm positive this will be entertaining. Yamato sighed at the other Jonin sensei, maybe the Hokage would straighten this out. His hopes were dashed soon however. Everyone turned to the aged leader as he cleared his throat. Hiruzen had a small smirk as he addressed the Jonin sensei. Very well then, as I have witnessed this bet take place I will be enforcing its outcome. As for rules, this is a bet amongst shinobi, so we will conduct it as so. You will not inform your students about this bet in any way, they will find out about it exactly one week from today, the night before the match is to be exact. Other than that you may go about the week as you see fit. In addition this presents a perfect opportunity to showcase our new genin to the rest of our shinobi. Therefore we will hold a semi-public hewing. So be warned this is not only for your wagers, but braggers rights at being the best sensei as well. He stated in an overdramatic announcer's voice. But the bet set the five jonin sensei disappeared in shunshins leaving behind the rest of the jonin and the hokage. Once they were gone Hiruzen looked to the jonin chewing the senbon. Genma spread the word and start the betting pool. 
he ordered with an evil glint in his eyes one shared by the Jonan. Three days later. The sun was beginning to set as the day winded down. As the nightlife of Kanoha was preparing to come alive once again two young Kanoichi could be seen sitting in a window table at a dango store. The first had short light brown hair tied into a ponytail with two strands framing her face as well as dark blue eyes. She wore the standard Kanoha Chunin uniform that would seem strange on someone that looked no older than 16. The Kanoichi sitting across from her was around the same age. She wore fishnet armor underneath her light green shorts and sleeveless fur jacket that seemed to match her light green cat-like eyes. Her hid I-8 was worn around her head keeping her slightly wild short brown hair at bay, and she had a pair of black fingerless gloves that came up just past her wrist. The first set down a cup of tea as she spoke. Wasabi any idea when sensei will show up? She asked. The now named Wasabi swallowed the dango she had before she spoke. Should be soon she's been catching a lot of extra work at the Hyuga compound. Well it's to be expected. Another voice stated causing the two to look at the newcomer. They both smiled as it was their sensei Hikari Hayuga. Why is that sensei? Wasabi asked with a raised eyebrow. She couldn't think of anything that would have one of the most influential clans in the village so busy. Hikari smirked slightly well for one I've been asked to help Lord Hisashi go through our archives. For another the village will be experiencing a large political shift near the end of next week. Wasabi's face scrunched in confusion, she was about to voice her questions when her friend beat her to it. I assume the second has to do with the Yuzumaki clan being reinstated. She asked. Hikari nodded. You're partly right Hinoko, the details have not been decided on just yet, but the Yuzumaki clan head has proposed an amendment to the village council. She stated happily. In truth she despised the civilian council and was overjoyed when her clan head had detailed the changes to come. Wasabi looked shocked at the name. Wait. Yuzumaki as in Naruto Yuzumaki she asked in shock. Hinoko nodded as she took another sip of tea. That's right he was in our class a few years ago. Apparently he's not just the clan head, but he's also a daimyo. She stated with a small smile. She had spoken with him some when they were in the academy and knew something was off when he started to fall behind. Wasabi had a wild grin as she pumped a fist in the air. Ha. Huh. Take that. I knew he was holding out on us, especially when he kept getting in trouble for no reason. She shouted in victory. Wasabi, inside voice. Hikari chastised. You may actually get to work with him if we're lucky. The graduate I had requested was placed on a team already, but Naruto-sen was placed on a team of two with Sayori Echa. They will be rotating missions with other rookie teams, and I plan to request Sandame sama add us to that rotation. She explained. Wasabi looked excited, she had loved Naruto's high energy and fun attitude. It made him an easy person to approach and speak with though for some reason he was treated like the plague. Hinoko's thoughts mirrored her teammates. So what did he propose? Wasabi suddenly asked. It must have been something big. Hikari had a slight smile. The civilian council was reduced to a strictly advisory role. The village charter however strictly stated there needs to be 16 seats on the council, excluding the elders and Hokage. So to remedy the situation Naruto sent proposed the minor clans be added to the council as a way to make amends for how they have been underappreciated by the village. She explained. Wasabi suddenly shot to her feet in surprise. My clan might get added to the council. She questioned in excitement. Wasabi was not just a member of, but was the heiress to the Izuno clan. Her excitement however dropped drastically as her sensei cringed. I'm sorry Wasabi, but the Hyuga and several other major clans were tasked with reviewing several factors of the minor clans. While the Izuno clan has aided the village dutifully she paused trying to think how to word what she was to say. Wasabi looked at her sensei seriously. It's okay sensei I can take it. She reassured. Hikari nodded and sighed before speaking. Your clan isn't very distinguished among the rest. Most of your members barely make chunin, and there hasn't been a jonin produced since the start of the second shinobi world war. She stated solemnly. She didn't want to make her student feel down, especially with becoming jonin her dream, but it was necessary for her to hear the truth. Wasabi nodded sadly, it wasn't untrue and was one of the few things that irked her about her clan. They were bottom of the barrel in talent and members barely had any repertoire of skills other than clan techniques. Deciding to try and cheer her friend up Hinoko spoke. I heard a couple other Chunin talking, apparently the sensei to the rookie teams made a bet and will be sparring against each other at the end of the week. There are a lot of bets flying around about who's going to win apparently. Why don't we go watch since we might have to work with them? She asked hopefully. Anoko wasn't what one would call a social butterfly, but if it would cheer up her friend she would suffer through it. Wasabi perked up a little and agreed as did their sensei before she noticed the time. Ah sorry sensei, Hinoko I got to run. She stated as she left heading towards her clan's home. The two women left behind sat quietly before Hikari spoke. You should really tell her you know. 
Inoko looked slightly annoyed they were broaching this topic again. I would if I could, but I'm not supposed to openly state it. If she finds out that's another thing entirely. She stated before taking out some money. Here this is for our half sensei I have a shift coming up. She stated as she quickly left. Bakari sighed. Fine just be careful mouse. She whispered to herself. It had taken Wasabi only 20 minutes to arrive home. As she opened the door she was met with the surprise of one of her cousins waiting for her. When asked what was going on she was simply directed to meet with the clan head immediately. Wasabi grew slightly nervous, the only time she was called to the clan head by messenger meant something big was to happen. She quickly nodded and made her way to a small door that led to her grandmother's office. Unlike many clans of Konoha the Izuno clan head was chosen based on merit not blood. While it was preferable for the next of kin to take the position it would be skipped if they were found unworthy. That was the case with Wasabi's grandmother, she had held the position since her early 30s. While many in the clan wanted her to pass the position to her son, she refused stating he wasn't fit for the position. In Wasabi's opinion she wasn't wrong. Her father was a loudmouth with grand aspirations for the clan, but he knew nothing of how to reach them. He was lazy, obnoxious, and a career genin. That had been the reason Wasabi herself was chosen to become heiress. Unfortunately that had led to her father becoming very angry as well. She and her mother had left him and moved in with her grandmother after a particularly bad argument. Shaking her thoughts off Wasabi knocked and entered when she was given permission. Entering the room Wasabi was greeted with the same usual warm smile her grandmother had given her since she was a child. Amagi Izuno was an elderly woman, short in stature, with white hair that came from age and many years of stress. Many would describe her as somehow looking like a human tabby cat. To many she came off as slightly off her rocker with her exaggerations of her clan's old legends. Though to those that knew her they knew it was all a carefully created ruse so that others wouldn't see her as much of a threat in her old age. Upon her granddaughter entering and sitting on the cushion across from her she opened her eyes, showing they were the same cat-like green eyes that distinguishes her clan. Hello dear how have you been? She asked as she poured the younger Izuno a cup of tea. Wasabi eyed her grandmother for a moment before speaking. I've been fine Bachan, I just got home from a little meeting with my team. Amagi nodded slowly before speaking. Have you heard the rumors going around the village? She asked. Yeah I just heard about them today except they aren't rumors, Sensei confirmed there's going to be a big change in the council, thanks to Uzumaki-san. Wasabi replied. We may actually end up taking a few missions with his team if we get the okay from Sandame sama The Izuno head nodded happily. Good that would make things easier on her. She thought to herself before speaking aloud. Good, good, unfortunately I doubt we will be a part of this change. She replied sadly. It hurt that she was one of the last in her clan to become a jonin and had hoped her clan would step up, though it appears she had stood on the sidelines too long. Wasabi recalled what her sensei had just told her earlier and nodded sadly. Yeah, sensei said the same thing. She added. Amagi took a deep breath before looking her granddaughter in the eyes. She noted she flinched slightly at her serious expression. Wasabi, tell me honestly what you think of our clan. She stated. Wasabi wanted nothing more than to give her something simple, that she wouldn't change a thing, yet seeing her grandmother's expression, she knew she needed to be completely honest. We're the bottom of the barrel. Our members barely mark above civilians in the academy and take an average of 10 to 15 years to advance to Chunin. Unfortunately, most of those promotions are out of gratitude for service, and that's those that barely pass Chunin standards and skill. She replied. She suddenly felt lighter having said as much. Amagi smiled sadly, so her granddaughter had seen it too. Yes and unfortunately there's only one thing I can think to do if we are to survive. She stated causing Wasabi to sit straighter. We have nothing to teach, our clan has refused for too long to look toward other avenues to expand upon. For this reason I have decided we will be annexed into another clan, and with the current situation in the village, there is only one viable option. She finished. Wasabi nodded sadly, having figured that was where this conversation was going. What clan did you have in mind? She asked. The Yuzumaki clan is the only option. They have a history of taking in clans that act as a branch family. Historically they have the royal Yuzumaki family that act as the main branch with clans they annex in, as the side branches to bring in new blood. This has already been discussed with the elders and they agree with me. That only leaves to discuss with Yuzumaki-sama himself as well as you. She explained. Wasabi nodded along with the explanation, it seemed like a good way for a clan to stand along throughout the ages, especially if they have strong genetics. She however looked confused when her grandmother said she had to part of the discussion. Um why me? Was all that she could ask. Her grandmother sighed tiredly. We can't simply ask for annexation especially with only a handful of members in the Yuzumaki clan at the moment. There has to be something to hold us there so that we won't look like we want to get some secrets and run. 
she explained. With Yuzumaki-sama under the CRA we've decided to arrange a marriage contract. As the heiress you're the most obvious choice. She stated finally. Basabi was shocked, she was to be married off to Naruto. What would become of her? Would she get to continue as a ninja? Would he force her to become a housewife? These questions and more were floating around in her head. She wanted to scream, to shout out some kind of objection. Taking a breath to calm herself she tried to think more clearly. This could be her only chance to help her clan, it could be their only chance to prevent themselves from dying off in a few decades. As if sensing her turmoil her grandmother spoke. I don't need an answer immediately, you have until the end of next week. She stated causing Wasabi to give her a grateful smile. If I were you I would find time to speak with Yuzumaki-sama, it may just answer some of your concerns. She stated. Wasabi nodded, grateful that her grandmother wasn't forcing her into this. She stood and walked out she needed to sleep and think. Whatever she decided could very well affect not only her future, but her clans as well. It was nighttime in Kanoha, and in training ground 11 four people could be seen standing in what looked like a war zone. Scorch marks covered the ground, uprooted trees here or there, and not to mention multiple craters from explosions. What might have happened one would ask. Well to answer in short, the genin of Team 11 had just been put through a rigorous final spar against their sensei to test their progress for the week. Banko and Yamato stood in front of their students with two completely different expressions. It was the agreed-upon date where they were to reveal the bet they had made with the other Jonin sensei. Yamato looked slightly unnerved, while his fellow Jonin was practically grinning from ear to ear. The reason for this one may ask, well that would be their students. Naruto and Sayori were both grinning from ear to ear at the golden opportunity they were given. Neither had anything against teams 8 and 10, even if Ino was annoying sometimes. No, they were given a free pass to basically humiliate Team 7 and boy were they ready. The pair had practically thrown themselves into their week-long training regimen with such fervor that they had started sparring against some of their sensei's jonin associates to gain experience and to hammer in the basics they had been taught. They had both mastered the water walking exercise to the point they could fight on the water's surface for an hour and a half, jutsu included. Their teamwork had become near perfect with the incorporation of Anbu hand signals, at Yamato's suggestion, and their work day in and out on formations to counter or deal with multiple situations. They had each mastered their respective assigned jutsu to the point they could each use them with only a fraction of the hand signs, and that wasn't all they had advanced in either. During their independent training sessions they had each worked just as hard to advance their own skill. Sayori could use three of her Katen Jutsu with just one to two hand signs, not to mention she had managed to get two low-ranked Raiden Jutsu under her belt. Her Jutsu skills had increased as well with her now able to use the Majin. Nij Kakoni Arazu no Jutsu and the Majin. Narukumi no Jutsu. Her personal favorite of what she had learned over the week however came from her training with her mother. Her mother had approached both her and Sasuke offering to teach both of them a new Jutsu style. While her brother scoffed at the idea and walked away she took the opportunity and was much better for it. Naruto was not one to fall behind either, thanks in no small part to Yamato and Anko, his Tejutsu had soared from low genin to high chunin. He had not slacked in his independent training either, whatever time that wasn't spent training with his team was spent training with his clan. Between Hakuru and Fumiko his skill in the basic Yuzumaki Kenjutsu style was at the intermediate level, meaning he was capable enough to use a sword in combat. Of course the others weren't left out of his training, especially after a tantrum thrown by Shion. Shuna having a wind affinity herself took it upon herself to teach Naruto a defensive Fuyutin Jutsu to complement his already offensive style. The same could be said for Shion as she taught Naruto a single supplementary Doten Jutsu. Finally, with an extremely liberal use of Cage Bunshin, Naruto had blown through the advanced material of the level 3 of Fuyutin Jutsu in no time flat. As of now he was at a solid level 5 intermediate series and was taking the time to develop some of his own seals before advancing further. He had also taken the rise in practical sealing knowledge as an opportunity to apply gravity and resistance seals to both he and Sayori. Knowing how far they had come in a week had made the two excited to begin missions tomorrow, or that was what they thought. Now that they knew of this bar between teams they were ready to see just where they were compared to the respective teams. Though Anko assured them they were far ahead of the others. Yamato shook his head, maybe Anko was rubbing off on the two a little too much. Alright, so tomorrow at 9 o'clock sharp you are to report to the stadium used for the Chunin exams. He stated. So do we know who we face first? Naruto asked, plans already beginning to form in his head. Anko shook her head negatively. Nope, all that we were told was that the match order had been decided already, that it was being held in the Chunin exam stadium, and that it is to be conducted as a match between Shinobi. She stated seriously. Sayori nodded as she spoke. Then we should be prepared for anything so let's not underestimate anyone. 
Naruto nodded in understanding, it wouldn't do well for them to get cocky after only a week of training, regardless of how much they had improved. Right. Naruto added though he was deep in thought, something about the way Anko had phrased what they knew was bugging him. Good, I'm glad you two are taking this seriously even if it is only a spar. Yamato stated. We leave you two to talk strategy, see you tomorrow. He stated before he shunshined out of the training ground. Good luck you two and just remember she started seriously before smirking evilly, you better wipe the floor with those gakus. She stated before disappearing the same way Yamato had. Seeing they were alone now Sayuri turned to Naruto with a raised eyebrow. So what's on your mind? You were pretty quiet during that. She asked with some concern. Naruto was rubbing his chin in thought. The way Anko-sensei worded what they knew. The part where the match is to be treated as one between shinobi. Sayuri raised a delicate eyebrow at that, now that she was thinking it over, it definitely sounded weird to say it that way. What do you think? Naruto closed his eyes before realization dawned on him. Soon he was smiling widely. Oh oh san is definitely a tricky one. He stated with a laugh. Sayuri pouted slightly at being left out, and she made it known by lightly punching Naruto in the shoulder. Well, feel free to share. Naruto just grinned in response. Oh I will, follow me. He stated as he walked away with Sayuri right beside him. Asuma sat in a booth at what had become his team's usual hangout, an Akamichi barbecue restaurant known as Yahiku across from him sat Joji and Ino, while Shikamaru sat to his left. He had just finished explaining the competition they would be undergoing tomorrow. To say they were excited would be a complete lie. Choji while having gained much more confidence in himself was still unsure of actually fighting. Shikamaru was still as unmotivated as ever, though he has managed to improve in his clan's jutsu and his tojutsu. Ino was the one that concerned him the most, Choji while hesitant had become much more competent in his training and just needed the right push to get him going. Shikamaru needed a reason to actually step up his game so that his physical skills could catch up to his mental ones. Ino over the week had hardly done anything physical without a lot of complaints. Even with her doing some of his training, it had become painfully obvious she was going to be the weak link in the team tomorrow. He could only hope that tomorrow would be an eye-opener that she either needed to shape up or she would end up dead. That was something he would not allow to happen, Asuma would drop her from the ninja program altogether before he allowed her to get herself killed. Ironically she was the only one that was actually excited for tomorrow. He knew that it would take a good amount of time to work the kinks out, but he had hoped to make more progress than he had. Asuma could only hope they pulled it together tomorrow. Kurinai stood in training ground 8 with her genin. She had just finished informing the three of the, the bet that was to take place tomorrow. The three had varying reactions though each were ready in her eyes. Anada had probably improved the most over the week, with both her confidence and skill in her new tojutsu style. From what Kurinai understood the boost in confidence had taken a huge leap thanks to her father actually praising her when she did things right now. Hiba had become slightly less brash if even by a slight margin. It was a feat that had taken no small amount of effort on her part, her patience. Shino was the least accomplished in the week with his tojutsu being worked on continuously to make up for his weakness in close-range combat. Though, his lack of overall progress was more or less because he was already considerably well-rounded and had the least flaws out of her team. She mused on the week of training as she watched Kiba bounce around in excitement. All in all she was ready to watch Anko crack as she went a month without a precious dango. Bakashi sat in his favorite bar as he nursed a drink. He had left his team after explaining what was to happen tomorrow and headed straight there. His reasoning was quite simple, they were terribly unprepared. Sakura was still a fangirl for Sasuke and it seems it has worsened with actually being on his team. He was a hair's width away from placing her in a jinjutsu to try and knock her out of it. She had barely done any work whatsoever over the course of the week, choosing instead to dawn over dramatically at everything Sasuke did. That it itself seemed to add to the Ichiha's rather large ego. While Sasuke actually trained he performed their teamwork exercises with absolute contempt, believing them a waste of time. It had gotten to a point Kakashi was reluctant to even think of teaching the boy any actual jutsu until he had gotten his act together. Sai on the other hand was a model student, even if Kakashi knew he was a root agent. That was probably something Kakashi should be grateful for if he was being honest. Had Sai been a regular boy Kakashi was positive he would have slit his teammates' throats by now. He knew immediately as he informed them of tomorrow's events that they would get humiliated. The other teams by now most likely had at the bare minimum good teamwork and were nothing to shake off individually. His team on the other hand were only skilled individually, well two of them were and would be sitting ducks if they were separated from each other. Unfortunately that was the most likely scenario, Sasuke had acted as if he was already guaranteed to win tomorrow, Sakura had actually looked hesitant but immediately spouted how Sasuke could beat them all, and finally, Sai was impossible to read. 
the only scenarios he could think that would play out tomorrow would be that they come together as a team when they see how outmatched they are, an unlikely scenario, but he was an optimist. Or they would be beaten and he could use that to try and motivate them. Either way tomorrow would not be a great day in the life of Kakashi Haddock. Next day, Chunin Exam Stadium. The stadium usually set aside for the Chunin exams was abuzz with activity. Down in the center the four teams of Genin stood, each in line with their respective teams. Genma stood in front of the assembled teams while absent-mindedly chewing a senbon. He looked around at the turnout the little bed had produced. It seemed that every shinobi in the village that didn't have essential duties had showed up to watch the rookies. Speaking of he turned his attention to the assembled genin as he spoke. Stand up straight you're the center of attention today. He stated before checking his watch. We start in five minutes. He announced loud enough for the entire stadium to hear. In the cage booth. Up in the booth usually set aside for the Hokujin visiting cage Hiraz and Suratobi sat with the respective sensei to each team. There was little conversation between the Jonin sensei as they waited for the start in anticipation. They had been told of what order Team 11 would face their respective teams. The order was to be Team 11 versus Team 7, then Team 10, and lastly Team 8, that was if they lasted that long. Seeing the last five minutes pass by Hiruzen stood and raised a hand quieting the crowd below. As everyone settled down to hear their leader he spoke loud and clearly so that everyone heard. Welcome Shinobi of Kanoha, one week ago these teams before you passed their true genin exams and joined our ranks. Today, in a series of team versus team spars, they demonstrate the results from their last week of training in their young shinobi careers. Pay attention all of you as these genin may one day join you on a mission and as they represent the future generation of our forces. Now, let this competition begin. There was a roar of applause from the crowd as Hiruzen gave the signal to Genma to begin. In the arena. Nodding at the signal Genma spoke loudly once again. If I can have everyone's attention. He announced causing the audience to quiet down once again. Here is how this will go, the winning team of round 1 will face the next team and continue until they have either won or been defeated. The fourth round will consist of the losers of round 1 and 2 facing each other. Finally the winners of rounds 3 and 4 will face each other. He announced. Genma then took out a piece of paper that had the match order listed on it. The first match will be Team 11 versus Team 8. All but these genin make your way to the contestants' booth. He announced causing the genin of Team 7 and 10 to leave. Page booth. Gurunai looked surprised that her team was facing Team 11 first. She turned to the sand aim as she spoke. Hokage-sama is it possible Genma read the list backwards? The age cage shook his head as a smirk played at his lips. No, the matches were clearly labeled last night when it was written. It appears someone swapped the list. He stated. Gurunai frowned as she saw Anko smirking. Anko did you do this? She asked accusingly, she was used to her friend pulling a joke or two, but this was supposed to be a competition. Anko laughed as she shook her head. Nope, not me Nai Chan, but I bet it was our team. She replied in a sing-song voice. Then shouldn't they be disqualified? Kurunai asked looking to the Sandame. Hiruzen shook his head. No, since when do Shinobi play fair Kurunai-san? He asked with a raised eyebrow. Akashi's eyes widened slightly as he realized what he meant. They had each been so busy with their teams they failed to realize the hidden meaning. They were looking underneath the underneath. He stated out loud causing the Hokage to smirk and the other Jonin to widen their eyes in realization. Arena. Teams 8 and 11 stood across from each other several feet away as they each took stances to ready themselves. Naruto and Sayori were smirking slightly which was returned by Kiba. Shino was impassive as usual, while Hinata was slightly nervous at the fact she was about to fight her best friend and her crush. Genma announced the start causing Sayori to form the tiger hand sign and take a deep breath. Katen. Msenka no jutsu, fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu. She shouted as she blew out a large fireball, once in the air it split into multiple smaller fireballs, causing teammate to scatter. Diba jumped to the left landing several feet away from the others. He was about to attack when he saw the dirt underneath him had been blown away, revealing a dark blue seal tag. His senses screamed for him to move, but he didn't get the chance as Naruto's voice cut through the air. Hi. Diba couldn't move as a large volt of electricity was sent through his body, rendering him and Akamaru unconscious. Naruto didn't get the chance to admire his work as a large swarm of bugs quickly descended upon him. Soon they had swarmed him and began draining his chakra causing Shino to approach. Just as Shino stood over Naruto his kickage dispersed revealing Naruto. Shino was about to go and help his teammates when the Naruto on the ground suddenly burst into smoke, revealing it had been a cage bunshin. Shino didn't have time to react as the real Naruto burst from the ground and delivered a swift punch to his gut, knocking the wind out of him. As he doubled over his body suddenly went stiff. He was about to try and call his beetles to him when Naruto spoke. I wouldn't call your kick H if I were you. 
That paralysis tag is my special design, if it's removed without the right process, a shock seal array goes off as a fail safe. He warned causing Shino to sigh. You were waiting underground this entire time. The Aburum spoke, it wasn't a question he had planted a beetle on each of the genin to locate them, and the one on Naruto had clearly been on his clone. Naruto smirked slightly. Yep, Sayori and I swapped the list of teams last night. We knew that by the time we got to you guys there was a possibility we would have been too tired to take you on. So we placed you against us first and snuck into the arena to set up several traps. He stated before he added something as an afterthought. Don't feel bad about losing, we had planned on you guys being the biggest threats and didn't want to take any chances, though we didn't know about the possibility of a rematch. Speaking of the Ichiha she was currently in an intense Dejutsu battle with Hinata. She was currently very grateful her sensei used a style that relied so heavily on flexibility, otherwise Hinata would have been the victor. Feeling as if the battle was going nowhere fast, Sayori deactivated the seals Naruto had placed on her for training and took the offensive. It was obvious Hinata hadn't mastered her new style yet as she had overreached more than once as she tried to hit her. Now Sayori just needed to happen once more so that she could counterattack properly. She was given her opportunity as Hinata overextended a palm strike to her chest. With a new speed that threw Hinata off Sayori used her left hand to guide the offending limb away and pull Hinata in. She then proceeded to twist her body as she grabbed her opponent by the coat and delivered a strong kick to Hinata's left leg. Finally in the span of only a few seconds Sayori had thrown the Hyuga Eris over her shoulder and planted one of Naruto's paralysis seal tags on her forehead. Sayori stepped back just in case the tag had failed after a few moments she determined it was holding. She let out a breath of relief as she looked around to see Naruto had taken down Shino and Kiba. She was glad everything managed to go according to plan, she was amazed by Hinata's new style. Had it not been for her tojutsu and endurance training, she was sure she would have been beaten by the onslaught of fluid strikes and evasive maneuvers of her friend's new style. That new style of yours is something else Hinata-chan. She stated, a small smile at her lips. Despite her current situation Hinata couldn't help but smile. I could say the same to you as well Sayori-san. You've gotten much faster as well. She replied. Genma, seeing that all three members of Team 8 were down for the count, called the match as Team 11's victory. Hearing this Naruto deactivated his paralysis seals, so he and Sayori could help teammate collect themselves. Meanwhile the audience above was stunned, in less than 5 minutes Team 11 had taken down teammate. The silence that had met the announcement of victory was soon overshadowed by the deafening roar of cheers that came from the crowd. But the audience. Hana Inyazuka, daughter of Tsum Inyazuka and older sister Takiba Inyazuka, was currently jumping for joy as she cheered with the crowd. One might ask the reason for her cherry demeanor, and one did in the form of Sabi Azuno, who was currently sitting with her sensei and teammate to her right, and the young Inuzuka woman sitting one row down and one seat to her left. Didn't her brother get taken down in the first 30 seconds? Why is she so excited? She asked aloud. She was met with a rather loud chuckle from her immediate right, as someone took the previously empty seat. Looking to see who it was she was rather surprised to see the Inuzuka clan head herself. Well that's pretty easy to answer pup, she put a lot of money on Team 11 winning the whole thing. Sum answered as she got a better look at the genin. Ah my bad I should have said kitten. She stated with a feral smile. Wasabi didn't mind the nickname as her mother was friends with Tsum to a certain degree. She bet against her own brother? She asked in confusion. Tsum snorted. Not really, she had to choose who to bet on. She could choose to bet on her brother with some okay odds, or she could bet on Naruto, her other brother in all but blood, and come out with a guaranteed win and a lot of Ryo. Hikari raised an eyebrow at that. Yuzumaki-sama wasn't raised by the Inuzuka though Tsum-sama. She stated with some confusion evident in her tone. Tsum nodded slightly. He didn't have to be, he's been around my family enough I consider him one of my litter. Not to mention he's been friends with the two of them for years and I've tried adopting him officially. Inoko and Hikari nodded in understanding, while well Wasabi decided to file those little bits of information away for later. Elsewhere in the audience Aruka was staring down at his former students in both pride and disbelief at how skilled they had gotten in such a short amount of time. He silently mused that he would need to start training again, otherwise they would pass him in no time. The Sashi Hayuga was elsewhere in the stands with some of the Hayuga elders seated near him. They were displeased that their heiress had been defeated in their area of expertise, while he on the other hand, was quite pleased with her progress. When he had searched the archives, it had been a painstaking process that had required more than a little help to undertake. His efforts were rewarded however, when a branch member named Natsu had managed to find a scroll that had been written by his wife. Amazingly she had hidden the scroll away where even with the Byakugan it was difficult to locate unless one was actively searching for it. 
but in the scroll was a note that she had begun developing the style she named the flowing gentle fist before she became pregnant and had hidden it away, believing the Hyuga elders would have destroyed it. That had only been a few days ago, and to say Hinata took to her mother's style was an understatement. To see that she was using it in battle after only a few short days was nothing short of amazing. He was silently thanking Naruto for that small note one week ago. The Kodo sat with the four members of Naruto's clan, who were cheering for Team Eleven. She, Sayuri, and the two sensei for Team Eleven had gotten to know the four over the week as they would sometimes be invited over for dinner or to train. She was currently smiling happily down as she watched her daughter and Naruto return to the arena after helping carry Kiba to the contestants' booth. Those two are quite something, eh, Mikoto-sama? Shuna asked having noticed the woman smiling. Mikoto gave a small laugh as she nodded agreeing with the young woman. That they are Shuna-san, I'm quite happy. I can rest easy knowing they can take care of each other on missions. She stated smiling. Hakuru spoke with a small smile. Yes, they do seem to care quite a bit for each other. He stated with a small smile. It had been obvious over the course of the week the two genin in question had been getting closer and closer with each other. He idly wondered who would end up confessing first. It wasn't a well-known subject, but he was a hopeless romantic when it came to young love. Bakodo nodded with a smile having watched the two bond through the years. I haven't had the chance to say it yet, but thank you for being there for Naruto. I've watched him for years and to see him around people that genuinely care it means more than you all know. She stated with a sad smile. Yumiko noticing the smile had one of her own, Naruto had become someone that each of the four came to care for deeply. She could see how he had become not only a student but also a grandson figure for Hakuru. She could see the blossoming feelings of Shuna and Shion that each held for him. To herself, to her he had become that warm presence that she never wanted to leave. He didn't treat her as just a bodyguard but as a companion. She had taken to joining him in his office during the evenings to simply unwind and talk freely, something she had never been able to do before. It's our pleasure Mikoto-sama and it's us that should be thankful for the two of you. She stated simply. Paige Budhanko was cackling like a mad woman after the match had ended. She was beyond proud of the two genin of Team Eleven for having planned out and executed such a good ambush. She quickly gave Kurunai a quick hug before dancing around in celebration. Yamato was shaking his head at Anko's antics, though he too had a small smile at how well prepared their students had been. Kurunai couldn't help but feel saddened by how quickly her wallet would be emptied by Anko. She could only hope that Team Eleven beat another team so that her fellow sensei could share in some of the misery. Though she had to admit she knows when she was wrong and now was definitely one of those times. She smiled at how skilled her sensei's son had become and by how much it was obvious her friend loved being a sensei. She had been slightly afraid Anko would have floundered a bit considering her past experiences. Asuma too was pleasantly surprised, though he was focusing on something after the fact. What were those two tags Naruto used? He asked curiously. Hiruzen looked towards the Jonin of Team Eleven curious as well. Yamato responded by taking out one of each tag from his pouch. They were both designed by Naruto, the blue seal tag is a shock tag, and as you witnessed with Kibasan, it is incredibly effective at incapacitating an opponent. This amber-colored seal tag is a paralysis tag, once applied it feeds off of the target's chakra, rendering them unable to move. After some testing Naruto found it could easily be removed if the individual it was applied to was recovered by a friendly. To fix that issue he applied a shock seal array, so that if the tag is removed incorrectly, it incapacitates both the target and whoever attempted to remove the tag. He explained causing the Jonin and Hokage's eyes to widen in shock. Takashi had his lone eye widened as he spoke. If he were willing to sell those paralysis tags, our Anbu would benefit greatly with capture and retrieval missions. Then there's the potential those shock tags provide as a non-lethal alternative to explosive tags. He stated causing Hiruzen to nod in agreement. Imado nodded having already come to similar conclusions. That's what I thought as well. I'm sure you'll be happy to know Hokage-sama that Naruto has agreed to sell those tags as well as some other seals he is developing when he finishes working on them. He had even stated that he is willing to provide a 25% discount to our Anbu and Hunter Nin divisions. He stated causing Hiruzen to form a proud grandfatherly smile as he looked at Naruto. I'm sure that will be most agreeable, I will have a meeting with Naruto at a later date in order to work out the details. He stated. Contestant booth. In the contestant booth there were varying reactions from the six remaining genin. Chikamaru was not too surprised as he had known for a while now Naruto was was better than he let on in the academy. Though now that he could actually see how much of a difference there was between them, he had to wonder if he needed to start doing more in training. Doji's thoughts ran along the same line as Shikamaru's. With watching how easily Team Eleven had beaten Team Eight, it really raised some questions about his own skill set. All he had to work with at the moment was two of his clan's jutsu, and that was when he pushed himself just a little harder. 
maybe it was time to start branching off into expanding his ninjutsu a little. Ino was the most affected out of her team by the performance. She had just watched a boy she had considered the dead last trick, disable, and essentially capture two of the class's better genin. Not to mention watching Sayuri and Hinata go at it into Jutsu showed how terrible she was in comparison, for crying out loud she would have been beaten in moments. The thing that really bothered her however was their teamwork. They didn't need to talk to each other to carry out their plan. They had said it and carried it out because from what she could see they trusted each other, could she really be that good? Hey Shikamaru, Choji can I talk to you two a sec? She asked rather meekly. The two looked a little unsettled that their normally loud and bossy teammate was suddenly so soft-spoken. They shared a glance before they shrugged and walked to a corner of the booth to speak. Ino took a minute to think back on the week they had spent training and even back to the academy. Soon she began to realize just how terrible she had been to her teammates and to her friends. She sighed as she turned around to face her team. Shikamaru looked confused as he spoke. So what's up Ino? Ino took a breath as she spoke. Watching that made me think about a few things. I've not been the best teammate and definitely haven't been the best friend. I've been lazy and haven't been pulling my weight as a member of this team. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm sorry and from now on I'll do better. She stated causing her teammate's eyes to widen. Shikamaru muttered a troublesome as he spoke. I've not been perfect either, I suppose I could put in a little more effort. He stated though lazily. Toji nodded. Same here, watching that match I think I need to train a lot harder if I'm ever going to catch up. He stated. Ino smiled at her teammates. So let's do this together, because I'm not going to be left in the dust by Sayori and Naruto. She stated with a smile that was soon returned by her teammates. Unfortunately not everyone was in such good spirits as Team 10. Sakura was adamantly denying that Team 11 had won their match fair and square as she phrased it. She didn't think for a moment that the genin of Team 11 were good, only that they had cheated somehow. Sasuke had his teeth clenched in anger, how dare his sister bastardize the interceptor fist style. Not to mention he had seen how well she had used that Katen Jutsu, that power belonged to him. Sai was the only member of Team 7 that remotely acknowledged the skill of his fellow Genin. Arena. Seeing that Team 11 had returned to the arena, Genma decided to end the short intermission he had allowed to move Team 8. Alright the next match is Team 11 versus Team 10. He announced. Soon the three members of Team 10 arrived and stood across from Sayuri and Naruto. Team 10 held no delusions as to how good their opponents were and had spent the last few minutes of the intermission devising a plan. As soon as Genma gave the command to begin Shikamaru and Ino launched kunai and shuriken towards Sayuri, while Choji used his Nikiden Sensha, Human Boulder, technique to launch himself directly at Naruto. Seeing the incoming hail of ninja tools, Sayuri quickly used a Kawarimi to switch places with a log. As she landed she soon found a kunai with a deep forest green seal tag was thrown right into her shadow. She cursed as she suddenly found that she couldn't move. You're not going anywhere, that tag is in Yuzumaki design that Naruto gave to my dad. Shikamaru explained as Ino readied her clench and tension no JUTSU mind transfer jutsu to take control of Sayori. Suddenly they heard a cry of Fuitan. FKJAINHEKI wind, style. Hurricane wall, and found Choji had been sent barreling into the two. Sayori looked over to see Naruto had a large swirling shield of wind around him. As it died down she suddenly found herself standing next to Naruto, and a clone was where she had been trapped. The three members of Team 10 weren't quick enough to recover themselves, as they all suddenly had kunai pressed to their throats courtesy of Naruto, a Naruto clone, and Sayuri. Shikamaru breathed a sigh and muttered troublesome. Alright, we give up. He announced causing Genma to call the match, it wasn't like they had much choice to be honest. The Naruto clone disappeared as Sayuri and Naruto put their kunai away and helped Team 10 to get up. Damn it you two really are troublesome. Shikamaru stated with a yawn. Naruto chuckled at his friend's laziness well you could have come up with any number of strategies, so we had to make it quick. He stated with a smile. Still that was a pretty good move trapping me with that tag. Sayuri stated with a small smile. Team 10 gave their congratulations and were about to walk off when Genma informed them they were about to face Team 8. He then looked to Naruto and Sayuri and told them they could go to the contestant booth to wait for their next match. The two nodded and were about to leave when Ino stopped them fidgeting slightly. Hey you two, I just wanted to say sorry for a well you know she trailed off. Almost instantly Sayuri and Naruto stated at the exact same time being a bitch. Ino flinched a little and nodded yeah, I'm really sorry for the way I've treated both of you. Can you give me another chance? She asked a little hopefully. The two genin shared a look and nodded to each other. Sayuri was the one to speak alright we can give you another chance on one condition. She stated with a devilish smirk causing Ino to look worried. And that is? She asked hoping it wasn't anything too terrible. 
You're going to be doing extra training with me and Hinata to get your ass in shape, you're way behind what any academy graduate should be. Sayuri stated. Ino looked relieved at hearing that, after all how bad could could training with those two be? Oh, if only the poor girl knew. She soon agreed, and the two members of Team 11 made their way into the contestant booth passing Team 8 as they made their way back to the arena.